it's over. From the four corners of the ring to the four corners of the world, welcome to BKB30, live from Phuket in Thailand, as we overlook the Andaman Sea. Brought to you by the world's biggest and fastest growing organization, BKB. Tonight, we've got 10 bouts, including two world title fights, with fighters from nine different countries. England, Wales, the USA, Canada, Myanmar, Cambodia, Russia, and of course, our host country, the Kingdom of Thailand. The co-main event sees Wales undefeated Barry Jones defend his world featherweight crown against the Canadian Johnny Tello, while England's world cruiserweight champion Dan Podmore faces Russia's Ahmed Bagazeev. BYB's exciting fighter Leo Pla takes on Mikhail Vetrilla, while the American Will Choke meets Petzilla with over 400 fights to his name. And there's another 12 knuckle chuckers in action tonight in a bill with enough action, thrills, drama and excitement to satisfy the cravings of any bkb holly. Time to buckle up and get ready for the bare knuckle roller coaster ride of your life. With me ringside, Andrew Whitelaw, who hosts combat sports programs for Fox TV Asia. More from him shortly, but right now it's showtime with millions around the world watching. Our joint MCs, Lance Murdoch and John Nutt, are ready for action. First though, John will lead us through the Thai National Anthem. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all to stand up. As this is the Kingdom of Thailand, I will now sing the King's Anthem. No prapumi ban bunyadi re Ek parama jakin Prasi yamin Prayotsi ying yu Yen sira pra pra pori ban Hon pra kunta rang sa Hon pra chapan suk sa Exactly. Let's get up and let's get your fight fans. This is BKB30 live from Phuket, Thailand, and our host with the most, the best MC on the planet, Lance Murdoch is here. Ready, cut, big up, big up, big up, big up. Somebody my cat, cat Ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set. Thousands of hours of training culminate in this very moment. To everybody present here in Phuket, Thailand, and to the millions watching around the world, I need to know who's ready for action! Without any further ado, let's get down to business. Leo, Leo, Cap! Allow me to introduce, first of all, to the blue corner, Tam! Five foot ten, 24 years of age. It's his BKTM debut. He's from Thailand. Yeah. Amateur Boxing 4 and 0. Who run it? You know they're acting like it down now. Yeah. You do know what they're acting like it down now. Who run it? You do know they're acting like it down now. You do know what they're acting like it down now. True fight for life, these lads are game as they come. Fighting on the underground scene, if you will, in Thailand. Very, very keen to get this opportunity to fight on the global stage. It is a big chance for them to show what they could do and potentially earn a chance to fight in the UK. That's Andy Whitehall, he's with me today. He's an expert, all things Asian, combat sports. We're really excited to be here in the Kingdom of Thailand, overlooking the wonderful Andaman Sea. And next, allow me to introduce his opponent into the red corner, Maseng, Mr. Fight. Maseng, Mr. Fight. He's 26, he's 5'9". Again, his BKBTM debut from Thailand. 
Bare Knuckle, though, he's been in the Bare Knuckle ring. He's one-on-one -on -one in Bare Knuckle. He started in organized street fights. He fights orthodox stance. They both do. This could be a great start for us, Andy. Yeah, I'm expecting fireworks, of course. I'm expecting finishes. This street fight scene in Thailand has become bigger and bigger. It has a massive following, Tom, and it's a fantastic breeding ground for big talent. And now they get to earn a stage like this. That one-in-one -one experience in bare knuckle could be telling. It's crucial, isn't it? Well, the difference is you can get knocked out with a jab in bare knuckle. In boxing, you can get hit four times with a glove and be okay. Once in BKB. Good night. The lights are out. But we are expecting a real blow. And every one of these fighters are auditioning with Jim for a chance to come and fight at the O2 Arena on a BKB show. Getting a little pop from the crowd. He's a popular young man here. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, BKB Thailand presents five two-minute rounds of bare knuckle boxing. Introducing first in the blue corner, representing team The Fight for Life with an amateur boxing record of four wins and three losses, representing the country of Thailand, Tam! Across the ring, his opponent stands in the red corner, representing Mr. Fight Team with a bare knuckle boxing record of one win and one loss, representing Thailand, Masang, Mr. Fight! Our referee in charge of the action is Matt Semper. Let's get down to business. Leo, Leo, cap! Ready to get the first fight underway here in the beautiful evening sun. A bit of cloud, but a beautiful warm evening here in Phuket. Yeah, you couldn't ask for a cooler app. It's like a video game here. And I'll tell you what, Masseng couldn't wait to get going. He was like a bull in the corner. He got it to start in the center before the ref let him. Big cagey start. Five two minute rounds. A bit of encouragement from the referee. Normally, and of course, watching if you're watching, Ian, we normally have three two minute rounds. It's five two minutes here above the water timers, which is seven two minutes. But a cagey start here, which you can do over five minutes. An overhand right there from Mr. Mr. Fight from the same. And there's a good right from him. Look sharp, early doors, Masang. Masang looking to work that jab. And that right, the booming overhand right. Work the Very jab strange. Well again. He's, he's a strange. He fights forward, but off the back foot. It's really strange to watch him. Oh, good shot. Yeah, it's an intriguing style, it's, isn't it's it? It's a really oh, good shot, though. He lands that right with perfection. Back comes Tam, though. Saying he leans back and then springs forward with the right hook. Tam finding his timing with the jab. That's what he's, he's trying to work off the jab. Good shot. But both of these already we've seen go for the headshot. Not one trying to work the body. Oh, that's a lovely right. Great right from Masang felt that. Crack. But very often, if you kill, kill the body, you kill the head. You know what I'm saying? If you work the body, we've not seen any attempt at working the body. Every single shot has been for the head. No, it's pivotal, isn't it, Tom? End of the first round. And they may well have a little word in the corner. We did see a couple of shots to the body from Tam. He's got to invest more. They were good shots as well. Some really hard hitting shots. I think it's a, it's a scene of what's going to happen the rest of the night, isn't it? You know? But they've had a round to sort each other out. They've both felt a bit of pain. And I think you need that. You need that bit of pain just to start it all off. First one of the night. Is everybody feeling the back? Really <laughs> so, so the judges have gone with us, really. One blue, one's gone blue, one's gone red, one's gone draw. And feeling each other out yeah, is pretty absolutely. much what we said. Well, it's interesting. We talked about Masseng having that's that one-on-one one bare-knuckle record. We do. 
Jim will come and give us the judges scores after every fight and at the last round he'll tell the corners. It's good to know where you are. Well, because sometimes your corner's saying you're well ahead and you might be behind. So you need... I think he's telling him, he's telling him to work off the jab. The right hand can land, but working off the jab. That's Masang's corner. Was that about fair for you, Tom? A little even, yeah, Stephen. Even, Stephen. I thought it was, didn't you? But it, Phil, both landed good punches. Yeah. But feeling each other out a little bit. Right. Second round. Two local boys fighting for local pride. There's always a bit of that in the two ties fight. Both launching a naughty jab at the start of the second round. Goes to the body. <laughs> Bang. That, that right again from Maseng. It's evil. Oh, good shot with the right as well from Tam. Oh, good shot from Tam. Tam looking to set it up now, finding his rhythm a bit more. Masang with the right hand. Masang's, work, Masang's working off the front foot. Oh. Good shot again. Counter punching. Masang's starting to vibe a bit now, lining up his shots. I think when he misses, that was a, I like to see when he misses, he then worked off the miss. Which is fantastic to see. Don't go quiet. This is how we do it at BKB. Searching for the opening tamp. They're both looking for the knockout. That's what they're looking for. And I get the pride and the knockout. But sometimes all that matters is winning the fight. Yeah. And accumulating the points and winning the judges. Well, Tam is giving him something to think about. He did go to the body with the jab there. Whereas Maseng has just strictly stayed upstairs so far. Oh, good right again. Smash. He's got a good right, Maseng. Oh, this sun is blazing. Look at the sweat dripping off They'll these They'll be lads. feeling it as well out there, by the way. Oh. Oh. Maseng doubling up on that jab. Tam marching forward. What they are, though, both of them are very focused, aren't they? Exceptionally focused. Back comes Tam there with some good shots. Tam putting combinations together there. Masang just biding his time, searching. I love the respect between the two fighters. Absolutely brilliant. And a lot of these fighters would have come from a Muay Thai background from a very, very young age. Yes. Well, Masang started in organised street fights. And you can see a little bit of that in him, to be fair. That's exactly what he's doing. All three, for red. All three judges went for red that time, so... Mr Masang... Oh, Mr. Fight, my same Mr. Fight, he's actually making the progress now. We thought so on the front, on the from his back foot, but very, very attacking. It's strange. Usually on the back foot, he's defensive, but he's on his back foot, but he's attacking. Interesting to watch. Yeah, he's able to find that power and spring yeah. forward. And we did wonder if that experience, more bare knuckle experience, might be telling. And he does look a bit more dangerous. Well, now his second round, all judges went for him. Out. Here we go. Warming up nicely this fight, BKB 30. And if you are watching on uh, fight.tv or be in sports, ring your pals and tell them to join in because this is going to be one hell of a night. Some great fights to come. Yeah, how about that for a backdrop, Tom? Uh, amazing. As we get ready for the third round. Tam there, trying to be the aggressor. Yeah, Tam will have known that he's got to step it up a little bit with the pace now in this third round. Of course, the other thing is to remember, it's not just hitting, it's hitting the shots that were score the points. It's got to be part of the body or face that scores the points. Good shot from Tam. Great fight, it's turning out to be a great fight as well. Picking up the pace in this third round here. They're swinging wildly now, though. <laughs> oh, the big he right caught, hook. Tam caught, caught him then. Masang went to the body that time. Oh. 
so One thing is for certain, they're both working hard oh, in this sunshine. It's bouncing off them at the yeah. moment, Tom. Well, hard work and design will get you where you want. It will, won't it, Mr. whatever Boxy, the situation. Make some noise. The only problem is, is when you work hard, but your, your opponent works harder. Then you've got a problem. Looking to line up that knockout shot with the right cross is Massaint. He's not been quite so effective, Mr. Massaint, with that right. Um, with that right, you know, the right in this, this round. It's, it's earned him points in the previous round, but hasn't really been successful in this one. Oh, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Tam with the left foot, and now the right. Putting his combinations together, he landed there. He knows exactly what he's doing now, Tam. I think he's settled into a rhythm now. Oh, he's calling him on. Maseng's calling him on. A cheeky smile. Yeah. From Maseng, Mr. Fight. Calling him on. Wow. End of the third round. Interesting to see how the judges have seen that one as well. Yeah. You've got to give it up to these two lads. The stamina not in question, is it? Remember, they're fighting in the blistering heat here in Phuket. We'll fight out from Jim. Two red, one blue. Two gone red. Maseng, one gone blue. I thought Tam had been a bit more aggressive in that one. I thought he'd be, he was growing into the fight. But now, Maseng's got the edge, hasn't he, now? He's ahead now. It, we need to see something special from Tam. And, of course, we've got, let's look, we've got some great fights up to come. We've got two world title fights to come, which are really... We've got somebody that they've seen at home before, Mr... Um, the Mexican specialist, Leo Pla. We've got Will Chobu, they've seen fight at the O2 Arena for VKB before. It's a really great fight. And the one I'm looking forward to, TT Denman. TT Denman. Oh, he's got lightning in that right yeah. hand. When he touches you, generally, you're going to sleep. You're absolutely right. The sweat, and they're breathing so hard, the sweat is dripping out of them. It's a good vibe here, Round Pearl of the Andaman, Phuket, Thailand. <laughs> Wait for the horn. <laughs> Breathing heavy now is Tam. <laughs> Got to start to push the pace now, the man in the blue corner. I think he did better that last round. Let's see what he does this round, see what he's got in his uh, locker. But remember, with each minute, they're getting more tired. He's, he's saying, smiling at him, Missing. Yeah, he's saying that came off the shoulder. The crowd getting lively now, getting behind their man. A great shot from Tan. Smash. Great shot. Things are going to get lively now. Neither are using the ring well. They're, they're really toe to toe. We're not seeing that sort of skill yet. No, we're not skill seeing set. the footwork. No, not at all. And your feet get you into trouble, they get you out of trouble. Tam's marching it's forward. Better, it's better this round again, Tam. Which could set up a great final round. Going to the body with a jab. We want to see him invest in the body a little bit more, though. Absolutely. We all want the knockout. Every every punch is towards the face. Sometimes you've got to be cuter. Oh, the saying with the right cross, the saying, lovely yeah. stuff. Yeah, better from the saying then. I think that's clever. Masengli, what he was doing then, he got under his arm rather than Tam put his arm around him. Clever play by Maseng. Here they are directly in front of us. Sweat dripping, a jab to the body from Maseng. In this heat though, if you miss, the energy you'll expend is Oh my crazy. word, you're sapping in lungfuls of dry air. Maseng is still looking cool, calm and collected. Yeah. That'll be interesting to see how the judges call that one. I think Tam did better that, that round. We'll yeah. see what they say. Uh, I'm not a judge, but... Because the only people that matter are the judges. There you go. 
We'll see as uh, Jim Freeman collects the judges' marks. As always, the promoter, matchmaker at BKB, and owner, of course. He'll tell us. Full house again. One draw, one red, one blue. One draw, one red, one blue. <laughs> I knew Tam had done better, but he's not good enough. That's the problem. I think he needs a knockout. Well, he needs man. it, doesn't he? He needs to pull it out the bag here. And uh, that coolness of Masen could be telling. He's, he seems to really enjoy himself out there. He's always smiling. But as well, we so that could be off putty. That could be a tactic for his yeah. opponent, remember. As we said before, though, this is the stage where we want to see something from you. Yeah. If you want to take uh, it to the next level. This final round now, this is, this, both of them now have got to go and win it. They've got to give everything now. Seconds out. It's the loneliest place in the world, that ring. Round five. Final round. Those organised street fights, very, very popular on YouTube. This guy's a bit of a star, Mr. Masang. And he's got to prove it now by putting this away in this final round. He's, he's claiming he was headbutted there. I think it was an accident. Or oh, a good shot from Masang. Uh, oh, clinching and punching, that's not allowed. That's a warning. warning. That's a warning. One warning, and then if he there does it go. again, it's a point. It's a fact, it was, they were told, no clinching and punching. Well, he was disappointed with that. He hasn't lost a point. If he does it again, he can change the way the fight ends. Really stepping up the pace Both now. Both of them going for it now, toe to toe. This is a tear up. This thing working the body much more, much better. Hitam cracks Great back stuff. with the right. He throws that right brilliantly, Tam, but he doesn't connect as often as he should. These two fighters looking to leave it all on the table or leave it all on the beach here in Phuket. Oh, good, good shot to the body there from Maseng. They're both tired, you can see oh, Maseng pumping up the volume here, jab, jab. Wild shots from Tam. Not connecting. I think, as I see it, I think Tam looks for more tired. This is the final round, make some noise, Phuket! Sam caught him there. In the centre of the body. body yeah. there's, not a, there's not a lot of power left in them now, you know, you no. can tell by the shots. But interesting to see him go low in the latter stages. I think that's more from tiredness, you know. They look really, look, all oh, low shot. It's really tired, they're both of them. They've given it all they can for five, two minute rounds. See, it's wild from Tam because he's tired. Well, you've got to say it's getting a little sloppy. Yeah. <laughs> Maximum respect between these two love fighters. It. Absolutely love that. Wonderful respect. And they are out on their feet. My word, Tom. They're out on their feet. Look at them. Absolutely brilliant. But I tell you what, as, as the afternoon wears on here in Phuket, Thailand, it will get a bit cooler. You don't envy these two gentlemen fighting in the sizzling heat. No. They've had the, the toughest of all the fights. The first one. Well, the second one, I suppose, won't be much better, to be perfectly honest. But we'll see what the judges say as we wait for the judges to officially give it to the referee and the MC. I think Masing thinks he's won it. I think he probably has as well. Just waiting for the final judge now and Jim Freeman to put the scores there. Interesting to see how it goes, but I'm... I'm plumping for Maseng to take it. Shouldn't be that long, should it? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not as clear cut as I think. But MMA legend Bob Sapp in the Bob ring. Sapp, yeah, Bob Sapp's there. Now Icon, he, now combat I, sports. I, I did tell him to clear off this morning. I did. Because <laughs> he was telling me about his seven bedroom house, etc. In, in a beautiful part of Phuket. But he's a, he's a top man as well. Absolute top man. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the Pink Rock City, Mark Mark, Chile Park.
Ladies and gentlemen, in our first contest of the evening, we resort to the judges' scorecards. It is a split decision. Our first judge gave it to the blue corner. Our second judge gave it to the red corner. And the winner in the red corner, Martin, Mr. Pavey! Split decision, but he got it. We didn't see that coming, did we, Tom? No. Well, I thought he'd won it. I thought oh, yeah. he'd won it, oh, but yeah. I, I thought he'd won it clearer than a split decision. I mean, Tam had his moments. Good fight, Ladies though. Ladies and gentlemen, give another round of applause for Marseille, Mr. Fight Club. Now well, they got us off to a good start. And as a say, wonderful start. Great to see two young, talented ties. <laughs> now, of course, obviously, regular BKB viewers back home will not know who's alongside me, of course. It's Andy Whitelaw. A little bit about your background, Andy. I've been covering cover combat sports now for about 13 years, from mixed martial arts to letway to Muay Thai and kickboxing. And it's an absolute pleasure to be here. This is my first BKB. I've lived in Asia 20 years now. Tom. And you're the, you're the expert on, on combat sports in Asia. You've done a lot of work for Fox and all other people as well. So when it comes to, I mean, you've covered Lathway, you've covered all sorts, haven't you? Absolutely. Yeah, I was recently in Slovakia doing a bit of Letway in a vintage that's some motorcycle that's some sport, that is, by the oh, way. Nine limbs there, headbutts <laughs> allowed. It's, uh, it's a vicious well, one. But the only rules are their own rules. It's, uh, it's a bit tasty, it's a bit tasty, but it's a bit tasty right here as well, and that's why we love it. Absolutely, we love um, BKP, we love to see, and today what we're doing is we're showcasing, we're showcasing talent for the future, and that's important, isn't it, to showcase future talent. Now, I'm hoping that one day we'll see some of these wonderful young men in England fighting at the O2 Arena, and if that can happen, wow. What an opportunity for some of these young lads. And I'll tell you what, you've been in the game such a long time. What a pleasure it is to work with you, Tom. But have you ever he's commentated? He's saying I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> very wise, very wise. <laughs> a very polite way of saying it, but you are right, I am. You know, but, have, but you, have you commentated in an arena such as this with never. the Pearl of the Andaman? I've been all over the world, World Cups, football in Europe. I've been everywhere. Never with this backdrop. This is absolutely amazing. Honestly, it's, I can't tell you. It's just, I wasn't sure about ever wanted to visit Thailand. If I'm, you know, everybody talks about various things in Thailand and stuff. I've come here, it's absolutely brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. So, it's a wonderful city, the Kingdom of Thailand. Now, ready for our second fight. Okay, ladies and gents, let's get straight back to it. No time for mucking about this afternoon. Allow me to introduce next to the blue corner, M. Darrow. M. Darrow. M. Darrow from Cambodia. Yeah, M. Darrow fighting out of Cambodian top team with Mr. Chan Reach, who is the godfather of Cambodian MMA. He's got a lot of fighters under his stall. They fight in Kung Kamai, which is the traditional Cambodian it's, it's, martial arts. It's, it's Muay Thai, isn't it? It's just Muay Thai. Very similar to Muay Thai. He's fought with ropes on his hands before, but this is his BKB wow. debut. He's 31 and 8 in. Uh, how do you say Kung, Kung Kamai? Kung Kamai. It's absolutely brilliant. He's 31 and 8. And there's a little, I suppose there's a little bit of something when Cambodia fight. Because there'll be a lot of people watching in Cambodia because he's a hero there. I'll tell you what, when the Cambodians come out, they come out like they watch in their tens of thousands. They support their fighters, fiercely patriotic and beautiful country. And next, allow me to introduce his opponent into the red corner. Sun. Well, this is interesting. This is about, and let's give him full credit, a real warrior, because he took this fight this morning. He looks seasoned, doesn't he? When, when the original um, Banlego Bandasak didn't turn up, they said, would you fight? He said, yeah, I'll fight, and he's gonna fight. I mean, you gotta give people credit for that. That's, he's, a, he's a boxing coach and he has fought. We don't know too much about his record, but he's from Thailand, obviously. Um, and he's took the fight late. I have no idea what he's got to offer. We'll find out. It's a mystery. It's a mystery, Tom. So we're going to go a little bit by his demeanour. I mean, he's the coach. He's the main man at his gym. And he's in great nick. Oh, look, he, he knows what he's doing. He's, uh, he's not to be trifled with. He's coming out to DMX 
which suits him, I think. He's a raw individual because he's the leader of these boys, a very hardcore gym. He's in immaculate shape and uh, very experienced. BKD presents five two-minute rounds of their local boxing. Introducing first, in the blue corner, representing Cambodia top team, with a Khmer boxing record of 31 wins and 8 defeats, representing the Kingdom of Cambodia, M. Daniel! Across the ring, his opponent stands in the red corner, representing Bundesak Jim, with an illustrious Muay Thai boxing record, representing the Kingdom of Thailand, our referee in charge of the action is Tommy Hayden. Very experienced referee. All right, guys, we already went over the rules and the bags. Mr. Tommy Hayden has done it all in combat sports. Used to fight in the UFC as well. Yeah, yeah, he's fought. And there's no messing, he said. Let's get down to business. Lay it up, Cap! We're ready to get this five two minute rounds underway. Now, M. Darrow is a softly spoken chap outside the ring. He's a veterinarian oh, in his man, spare time. He's a vet? Wow. He doesn't mess about when he's in the ring. Goes for the jab. I like to see fighters work off the jab, but that quick left from him there. Wild overhand and right attempt from Sun. Big shot to the body. We like it. I wonder if fitness will be the thing, mind you. I wonder if Sun's ring rusty. I have no idea. Oh, good shot from oh, M. Dara. Early knockdown from the young man from Cambodia. Three, four, five. Oh, Sun looks in it's, some pain here. It's a standing count of 18, by the way. I'll tell you what, he's, he's struggling. not getting up. He's, he's not struggling. getting up. 12, 13, Forget it. 14, he caught him clean as a yeah, whistle. He's not getting, he's not getting up. 16, we're in for our first knockout of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, there you go. He took the fight late. You know, it's listen. You this is not this is not a game you can mess around with, Matt. It's, you know, uh, it's sportsmanship at its finest, though. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But you've got to be fit. You've got to be ready. You've got to be ring set. You've got to have all those things. You can't walk into a fight on a day. I know fighters who do it. There are journeymen who do it all the time. This is not the place for it. You can't just step in. Someone buy that man a cold drink. He deserves it. He stepped Ladies in. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I wouldn't step no in. No need to check the judges' scorecards in the opening seconds of the very first round. The winner by way of K.O.M. Darrow! Maximum respect for the veterinarian from Cambodia. We haven't seen much of him, but what I've seen, he looks a real talent. We like it. Well, we talked about an opportunity to impress Jim and maybe get an opportunity to get on a plane. Well, we've got, we've just seen an absolutely amazing young man that, as you rightly say, maybe he's impressing Jim and Jim might think, well, let's invite him to the UK to see how good he is. But now we've, we're going to make history. We're going to make BKB history now. The very first BKB female fight ever. We've tried to match them before, never happened. This is our first. So history is made today. You know, when you think how long BKB has been going, and this is our first female fight. We're really looking forward to it. Um, I'm not sure, as I said, I haven't seen them fight before, but I think this could be a real interesting fight. I'll, I'll, uh, Nong Nioi, she had to lose a bit of weight. She had to work hard at losing weight. Um, Pat Demon didn't turn up till today, so we couldn't weigh her. So Nong Nioi had, had all the problems today, which was a bit unfair on her. She may feel a little bit hard done by. We don't know, but we're going to find out now. They're fighting at 55k. They're fighting at 55k. So let's find out what these two have got to offer. You've seen the females fight out here before. Well, Pat Denman is uh, a model by part-time trade. You know, you don't often see that someone willing to step in to get BKB it. and be a part-time model. Nong Noi, we've seen on a similar stage before. She's fought at this very venue. She's fought in the sunshine, suffered a knockout against Suri Manfredi, who's one of the best fighters in the region from France. She's a letway champion as well. So she'll be having a point to prove. She'll want to get back to winning ways, get her first victory on this stage. Let's find out. We'll get the fighters into the ring now, waiting is our ring announcer, Lance Murdoch. One, two, up next, ladies and gentlemen, our first ever women's fighter here at BKB. Allow me to introduce, first of all, to the blue corner, 
Pat Pemman. Well, it's something that we spoke about, Tom. Pat Denman, she, look at her Instagram page. She's modeling beauty products, Absolutely fashion. Absolutely crazy. Why would a model want to get hit? I, I just don't get it. But listen, we're going to find out Pat Denman. And again, Denman, you see a few Denmans fighting, but it's, it's a fighting family. They're not related, but they call them the, a fighting family. That's what they are. They're all of the, with, um, is it Pete Denman? Pete Denman is the, is the main man, former soap opera star in Thailand, of course. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it's a name that's popped up on my radar many, many times over the past few years, and they are incredibly game, this lot, and very fun to watch. And next, her opponent in the red corner, Nong Noi. Nong Noi, 23 years of age, 5 foot, Muay Thai, 37, 9 and 4 years, and she's been fighting Muay Thai since she was, I think, four years of age, for goodness sake. She's a very humble individual. We were speaking to yes. her before the fight. What can we expect from her? Is she coming to finish? She acknowledges that the height difference is going to be significant. She's going to have to try and get on the inside because Denman is so rangy. Pat, she's, she's going to use that range. Surely she's going to be staying behind that jab. And Nong Noi will be wanting to put that loss behind her that she did suffer at the Sea Gallery last time we saw her in the sunshine, fighting bare knuckle, but that experience could be telling for her. Well, she's using a Birmingham band for music to walk out to. ELO. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Evil woman. <laughs> well, I suppose that, that's probably what you want Ladies and gentlemen, BKB Thailand presents five two-minute rounds of bare knuckle boxing. Introducing first, in the blue corner, representing Team Denman, representing the country of Thailand, Pat Denman! <laughs> Across the ring, her opponent stands in the red corner, representing So So Long, with a Muay Thai record of 37 wins, 9 defeats, and four draws representing the kingdom of Thailand, Nong Noi! <laughs> Our referee in charge of the action is Matt Semper. This should be an absolutely fascinating clash of styles, Tom. Unbelievable, I mean. Let's get down to business. There we are, Cap! And also, weight and size, you know. I mean, they both weighed in almost exactly, so. Got height and reach. Very different body type. Pat Denman's got height and reach advantage. Enjoy the stance of Pat Denman as well, look. As we expect, trying to work that jab early doors. Going downstairs, Nong Noi. And then the right, then the left, then the right, then the left. A combination, she's unleashing well. Pat Denman. Brilliant. Tell you what, the crowd has raised the levels as well. They're excited for this one. This all tie clash, the first women's fight in BKB. Noi then goes hunting. Good defense though from Nong Noi. Tries desperately hard there. Very upright, you know. Um, Pat Denman, very upright. She, you would like to see her get her chin down a little bit because she's, she's, without writing the word target, she's. Unbelievable range on her, but you wonder if she can generate the power. Oh, that's the trouble. Hands very low. From from where we sit, Nong Nyoi looks the the stronger. But who knows? Nong Nyoi, lots of Muay Thai experience. Oh, good shot from Pat Demon. That jab's finding a home on the chin. You know what she's doing well, Pat Demon? She's got height and reach. She's backing off because she doesn't want Nyoi to get in your side. If, if Nyoi gets inside, she can cause problems. She's keeping her at distance. That's a clever tactic. And to the left, Pat Denman. And the jab lands again. Denman there just tries that. But she's, she's throw a few of those. But the defense from Nong Nyoi is good. So she's sitting her hands. She's not scoring points, although she's throwing them, Pat Denman. 
See a little bit of blood from the chin now on Nong Nui. Yeah. That right-left combination paying dividends for Pat Denman. Just classic, simple, fundamentals. It's an intriguing first round. Interesting first round, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, she's, what I like about Pat Denman, she works off that jab. She works off the jab. She's Again, though, I think the range of shots, I think Nyoi looks like she's got a better range of shots, whereas Denman is... Has been, pre has been predictable. Well, it's all Pat Denman. All Pat Denman, the judges have gone, all Pat Denman. Well, I, I think it was originally supposed to be Poe Denman in this it fight. It was indeed. And Poe Denman is almost identical in terms of build. Skinny, tall, rangy, and she's a knockout artist. And we're seeing quite a similar style from her teammate here. Well, it's interesting because she is predictable though, that jab and then the shot. But she's effective with it, because why? Because she keeps her distance. She's using the height and reach because she keeps away from her. Noi needs to get inside. She has to get inside to make life uncomfortable. We're seeing good aggression from Nong Noi. She's marching forward, she's marching forward. She's got to be careful that she doesn't walk into something, which Correct. has happened on Absolutely. a few occasions. Ready for the second round. She almost looks like a video game character, doesn't she, Pat Denman, with that stance and that look of hers. The jab, no early doors. Oh, good shot from Noi, smashing her with a no, couple no, of right no. hands. Yeah. That's where she, when she gets inside, it's better for her. She's a bit wobbled there, Pat Denman. Yeah, she's, she's stalking. Oh, oh, great shot. Great shot. Two great shots No, no, unleashing here. Because she's got inside. She's not allowing... Oh, that was a big Denman. right hand. Demon's fighting back though. Oh, good shot again. Bang! And again. Huge shots from Nung Noi on the inside. Because it suits her to be that close inside, to work on the inside. The height and reach is negated. She can't get them shots off. Oh, look at the face now on Pat Denman. Now she means business, but Nung Noi cracks her again. She's back on her. Good shot again. She went stalking, didn't she? Went chasing her. She wants in close all the time. She's found her range. She's found her rhythm. Okay. Oh, making some good noise shot now. And a great Maxa shot. with the right once more. See, Denman, when she's at a distance and picking the shots, she's absolutely fine. She's gone looking for her. She's gone hunting her to get inside. Well, that jab was clean as a whistle. Oh, good shot again from Nong Noi. But it's Nong Noi who's dripping with blood here. Yeah. But that, that's... Irrelevant. That judges won't take that into account. She's very much on the back foot, as has oh, been the shot. story. <laughs> She's moaning now. Two absolute warriors for the first female fight in BKB. This is yeah, this is lived up. That gentleman's moaning because she's not happy with the aggression. I have to say, Nong Nui, whether she's gone angry or not, she's gone hunting. She's moaning, look, told well, you. The judges are going to love the aggression. Having dropped that first round, oh, she's come out. She's going to... Point taken. A point deducted. She can't believe it. She looks shocked. I'll tell, tell you what she does, Denman. Every time the right comes, she doesn't move. She turns away from it, still leaving it there to be hit. You see, sometimes it's not just your head you've got to move. You've got to move your feet. And she's getting hit one more time. I think that's them. Uh, that's Nong Nui's round without a shadow of a doubt, but we'll find what the judge says. The trouble is the cuts, whether they, they you know, whether the cuts are. That could be a problem. Pat Denman does not like it when her opponent gets on the inside. She no. doesn't like it one bit. One drawn round, two for the red. One drawn? Yeah. So you obviously the one two for the red, one drawn. Well, that's an intriguing one, isn't it, Tom? Denman was not in that round, for me. But listen, I'm with the you there. The judges are the judges, and that's what they're there for. But you've got to take damage into account, right? No, you don't. You only take into account is punches. No matter how much blood there is, it's the punches. And if they're scoring it, it'll be each punch they score. This is the worry. It's the, it's the cut. I mean, this could be a big, a big problem for Nong Noi because Absolutely. She, look at the face. She's taken some, some proper damage here. Early on, when Denman was controlling it, now she's got to keep doing what she's doing, getting in close and upsetting her. I mean, in contrast, Denman does That must have fresh. been a warning, not a point deducted, by the way. That's a, that's a warning. She's 
cracking her with that right yeah. hand. She's loving life out there she's now. No noise. No noise. No no she's house. in charge. She's in charge of the fight. You'd love to see her stalking forward like this, just uncorking that right hand. She wants that right. Oh, and there's the left. Oh, the left. Oh. Right, sun's still blazing out here, Tom. Good stuff. No noise. Goes after her again. This is like real life Mortal Kombat. Oh, oh good shot. For me, you know, he's dominating the fight now. Because there's no response from Denman. No response whatsoever now. And yet she was the better fighter of the first round for, for large portions of it. She wants to moan at the referee all the time. Pat Denman trying to put combinations together now. Complaining again. She's trying to let her hands go though, Tom. You're not impressed with her, are you, this round? She's, no, she's I don't like when you complain to the referee all the time. What, less, what you're really saying to the ref is, she's got the better of me here. Do something about it, move. Because Denman showed it early on how, how, how good she was. Oh, Nong Noi, a bit wild, losing balance there. She's gone angry now, Noi hasn't she, and you can see. Seems to be a bit of animosity maybe between maybe these two Maybe just ladies. a little bit, yeah. To be fair, there's nothing wrong there, a little bit. They're like polar opposites, aren't they? Body type, style. Everything, everything. Oh, that's a lovely jab. That's what she needs now, more of. If Denman can keep the distance and jab and punt, that's where she'll score. I mean, look at the face of Nong Noi at the moment. It's blood, sweat and tears, isn't it? She keeps catching her like that, she will score. Wow, what a round, ladies and gentlemen. What a round. We saw improvement from Pat Denman as the round wore on. The question I always ask myself is, did she do enough? No. She might have been, did she throw a punch that bothered her? No. The punches that, suff that she's suffering from were early punches. And I don't... I think, I think when she got hurt a couple of times, I think... Well, that, I want to hear what Jim's got to say. All three for blue. All three for oh, blue. What a great first woman's fight, love it. What a banger. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Well, there you go. I think I that can't feeds, believe it. That feeds in for what you were saying, Tom. All three for blue. Yeah. All three for Nemeth. Okay, well, we'll see. But it's a good fight on BKB. Yeah, I... I'm I surprised Denman, at that. I'm I surprised Denman, at that. I thought no, he won that round as well. But listen, as I said, as are opinions, the judges count. But you're at home; you can make your own mind up. I mean, she did improve to us uh, as the yeah, round wore on. Yeah, she's improving as the round wore on. Cracking fight, Tom. Great fight for the first female fight. <laughs> Nong Noi, I think we'll have won some admirers here already, no? Well, she's brave, that's for sure. And as we say, she's got a point to prove, you know, she got a, a bare knuckle loss in this oh, venue body previously. Shot. Lovely body shot. What she has to do, though, is, is get inside. She can't afford to let Denman keep her, keep her at a distance and pick her off. She can't allow it. If it's like this, Denman can pick her off all day long. She's got to she's find got her reach. way. Look at the reach. Get inside and work. But Denman, now Denman's doing what she should do all the time, keeping her at a distance, then picking shots. That's exactly what Denman has to do. She's, she's having to run, she's using her feet. She's got to be a bit more canny with it though. No, no, I can't afford that. She can't keep taking these clean jabs. If, if this was the BYB Trigon, she could get her in the corner and Denman couldn't get out of it. It only becomes a brawl. Interesting here though, Dem now Denman is doing exactly what, she what she's uh, good at. Keeping a distance, picking her shots. Now, have, have we lost a bit of energy from Nung Noi? We need to see those big right hands connecting Maybe again. she's tiring. But the tactic has to be to get inside. But she's making it tough because she's backing off her all the time. I mean, these jabs are starting to accumulate now for Pat Denman. This has been the best bit of boxing we've seen from Denman this round. Bit of maturity at, from her. At a distance, keeping her man. And you know what she's doing as well? She's making Nung Noi chase her and work the ring. She's getting more tired it's by the minute. Sapping her energy, you can see yeah. it. She's got to dig deep here. Find the power in that right hand. I mean, Nung Noi's had next to nothing this round, Tom. Nothing. 
Pat Denman starting to go there a little bit here. That little jab there. That's the best round from Denman. So whoever in her corner has told her has been brilliant. Because that is exactly the way to do it. Keep her at a distance, work the ring, and she's getting more tired by the moment than I'm here. The last thing... Well, there it Three is. For blue. Less surprising with that no, one. No, that's better. Yeah, that, that's... I, I go, agree 100% with that. Well, now it's all set up beautifully, isn't it? Because we know that Nung Noi's got it in an Aloka to get forward, march on, and land a big shot. She's got to try and get the knockout, surely. You wouldn't believe this. They're playing the song that I recorded. Could you believe that? Fantastic stuff. I can't believe it, it's me and Ian Dante. No way! Singing the blues. They've, they've Can you had believe some, it? They've had some big tunes tonight. That, this is mega. What an afternoon, <laughs> what an afternoon. I can't believe we're out here forgetting they played our song, That's Singing the Blues. quality. Well. Well, it's very fitting. I can't get any better, I'm going. It's an, <laughs> <laughs> it's an historic moment here, the first women's fight in BKB. Fifth and final round, here we go. Here we go, this is going to be it now. And I think... Nong Nui has to knock her out to win it. Oh, she caught her with the left. A bit of swagger about Pat Denman now. Oh, she, oh look, this is where this is where Nui is at her best. This is where she's at her best. Getting after her. Rather than back in, get into her, get inside. Oh, for Nong Nui. That's it. It's a knockout or, or, or no, bust. No, that's it. She's got to knock her out. Man. Knockout or bust for Nong Nui. Oh, good shot to the body. Looks unfazed though, Pat Denman. The referee, Matt Semper taking a point off Nong Nui. She looks like she should do this all day now, Pat Denman. This is what Denman's, this is where, where she can be the, a really good fighter be, using the ring like she's using there. For a round, she didn't. Big overhand from Nong Nui. Complaining of an elbow. Oh, big overhand from Nong Noi. She's moaning again though, that, she, she shot and missed, there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of complaints from Pat Denman this evening, but working that jab. Oh, that big overhand right. When Nong Noi, when the crowd, when she marches forward, the crowd are buzzing for it. Yeah, oh she's, to be fair, there's nothing wrong with hitting and missing, that's what she's done, but Denman says she shouldn't hit and miss. Trust me, um, Pat. You'd rather a hit and miss than hit you. Absolutely, and it's going to sap her energy. These latter stages, she'll be digging deep now, trying to find that big finisher. And you wonder how much is left she's for Nongnoi. She's got no, nothing in the tank for me. She's, she's, spent, she's gassed she? out, she's gassed out. She's got to dig deep, she's got to try and find that definitive punch. She lands to the body with the left there. What a fight, Tom. Well done, girls. Now there's a bit of respect from each other. Brilliant. Well, what a fight. What a beautiful way to announce female fighters on BKB. Wow, a female fight. It's our first and we're so proud to have it. You know, we've tried to organise them before gyms work so hard and we've come close when one or two fighters have pulled out. But now, this has set the scene. Brilliant. It's just a fascinating contrast in styles. We've seen Nong Noi coming in here, landing with the right hand. Mrs. And we see the complaints to the referee from Pat. I tell you what was good about Denman. She didn't. She didn't get. She didn't get hit. She was good at getting out the way, and that's a tactic. Not getting knocked out, you know. We know that she models when she's not fighting, and she's kept the money maker in immaculate shape. Let me tell you for sure. Because it's a risk, isn't it, when you're a model? to put yourself in this sort of situation. Huge star potential. Well, 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 BKB Thailand. First things first for our first ever female fight. Make some noise for both of these warriors! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of non-stop action, we can stop the judges' scorecards. I can tell you it is a unanimous decision. To the blue corner, Pat Denman! And I'll tell you what, make some noise for Nong Noi! Abuka! Well, 
there you go. What a fight that was for us. And there's better to come. It's oh. crazy. We've got such a bill. And I'm looking forward to seeing the next guy as well. Another Denman, Pepsi Denman. I'm looking forward to seeing him because um, it's a wonderful story. He left home um, near Burma, went to Bangkok to be a, a fighter. That's all he wanted to do. And now here he is fighting on, in the big screen. Absolutely brilliant. So his team Denman is the Denman family. Not a, when I say family, you know what I mean? It's a fight family. But uh, we're ready to crack on, I think, are we? Yeah, the Denmans have really been enjoying some success in recent oh, years. Yeah. They are very exciting, very popular, very marketable fighters, if you like. Yeah. You know, kind of good-looking, star power, good finishes, usually. And I know that Pat Denman didn't get the finish there, but she'll be delighted with her performance. And it was a really fun bit of matchmaking, wasn't it? Because two totally contrasting styles, totally contrasting looks. But do you see a bit of star power in Pat Denman? Do you think? Uh, no. Do you think there's a future there for her? What I what I see is good boxing skill, the jab, the reach, keeping away, keeping out. Of, and remember, she fought gloved. I think she fought gloved a little bit of gloved as well. So she's got, she's got good technique. She's got a heightened reach for over most girls in this weight class. She uses it, and not only did that, she she then backed away. She and she's fitter. She got Nong Nui running around the ring getting unfit, unfit, unfit. Great tactic. I mean, you've got to give her credit. I think she, against maybe a better fighter, she would open herself up and she, you know, she's got to improve certain things. But she, there's definitely something there, that's for sure. That's well, for, for, sure. for me, anybody who's got a huge following online, is a model, looks great, willing to take the gloves off and step into bare knuckle, you've got something special about you. You're a warrior, absolutely. Let's uh, get our next fight underway. Let's cross to Lance. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get straight back to business. Up next, allow me to introduce, first of all, to the blue corner, Raksa. Raksa, he's 18, he's 5 foot 11, Thailand, and he's uh, again TFFL. He's part of that uh, fight family. True fight for life, is it? True fight for life. Wow. He looks like a California gangster. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of street cred for this young it, man. Yeah, he's three and two in amateur boxing. He's from Phuket, so it's local lad. So, big night for him then, isn't it? To fight in his hometown. Absolutely, fighting in the Pearl of the Andaman. They've bred so many incredible fighters here. Such a rich history of Muay Thai. But Bare Knuckle, increasingly popular in this part of the world now, Tom. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to enjoy watching him because he's, I like watching switch fighters. He's, he's not orthodox, he's not southport, he'll switch. I like to see that because that's a great tactic. If you can apply it properly, it's a great tactic. It's a three and two amateur record. This is a step up. Big step. A step up in stage, a step up in competition. Pepsi Denman is a really engaging, really exciting fighter. And next, allow me to introduce his opponent into the red corner, Pepsi Denman. From the Denman family fight club, call it what you will, but it's, it's, a, it's a collection of individuals. They're not related, but they're part of the family. He's 22, he's five foot seven, he's 10, 0 oh, and one in amateur boxing. He fights organized street fights, or as he says, he, any fight he can get, he'll fight, which I love to hear. He left home as a boy near, near Burmese border, and he went to Bangkok to be a crow. He went with his pal, but his pal quit and went home, but he stayed because he wanted to be a fighter, and here he is tonight. Well, what better place to go and do that in Bangkok, Thailand? So many world-class gyms there, and we talk about the street fight Thailand, which has become massive online. You can go and check out some of his previous fights. Ladies and gents, BKB Thailand presents five two-minute rounds of bare knuckle boxing. Introducing first in the blue corner, representing the fight for life with an amateur boxing record of three wins and two defeats from the kingdom of Thailand. Raksana! Across the ring, his opponent stands in the red corner. Representing Team Denman with an amateur boxing record of 10 wins and one defeat from the Kingdom of Thailand, Pepsi Denman! 
Tommy Hayden is our referee in charge of the action. Just 18 years old, Raxa. Bright future ahead of him if he can get the victory tonight. Referee telling exactly what he wants. Let's get down to business. It's great for me. I love showcasing talent. Seeing all these new fighters I've not seen before is amazing. And thank you, Thailand, for making us so welcome, by the way. Round one. Ooh, straight out of the block. Raxa came flying Raxa, out of the Straight out of the block. But he's got caught with the left. And again. Oh, he's throwing that, throwing that wild right, the booming right hand. He's got that wild street fight yeah. style about him. It's the overhand right. Yeah, he looks as if he's more at home fighting in the street. Oh, that wild right again. A bit of head movement from Pepsi to evade those punches. And a bit of holding just to take the pressure off. Bit of nervous energy from Raxa, perhaps. Oh, he wants to make a big impression, doesn't he? Some wild shots from him. But in BKP, you need one to land, and it, the whole fight could be over. There you go. You've got to bring it. You've got to shoot your shot. Team Denman, make some noise! But there's a smoothness about the Denman team. We're seeing a little bit of that from Pepsi. Look very cool and calm in the face of. Well, he realises it's five rounds. That's it. Now he, he's used a lot of energy. A yeah. lot of energy. Slip. That won't count. A lot of energy is used now. It's a, it's a youthful exuberance from yeah. the teenager, isn't it? I think, I think probably Pepsi will just use his experience just to see the fight. Well, let's see how it pans out. I mean, as you say, he only needs to land one, but for a five rounder, he's, uh, he's expending a lot of energy on those wild shots and not connecting. Raxa. Well, you use more energy when you miss than when you hit. Denman can see just trying to gauge the range. Yeah. Oh, good shot. Oh, two good shots from Pepsi. Beautiful work. Two great Pepsi, shots. Denman unloading on the body. He's going to take a count off the rope. Oh, he gets the time now. A classy ending. The crowd loving what they're seeing from Pepsi Denman. He took advantage. He, he did the criminal thing for me. He turned his back. He can't turn your back. And he did the right thing. He carried on punching. While the referee was there, he carried on punching. Interesting as well. We saw him just unload to the body because that will pay dividends later on in the fight. Obviously, a 10-8 round now, so yeah. 10-8 round because of the, uh, the count. You have to say that Raxa looked a little bit rough around the edges there. A well, bit raw. He was all youthful ex exuberance. That's all it was at the start. He's got to be he's got to be cleverer to start with because he'll pick him off. Well, that's it. This is what we keep talking about. The Denmans, they're smooth operators, yeah. Tom. He's done well, hasn't he? De is it Peter Denman runs it? He's done well. Because they're well coached and that's a key thing. Pat Denman showed the way forward in the previous fight, in the women's fight, getting the job done. Pepsi with the 10-8 in that first round here as we go into the second. This is BKB, right? Which is like chess with violence. That's what it is, isn't it? Chess with violence. You're looking for somebody to, have, to be a little bit cleverer and make the right moves. We saw the referee call for action at the uh, end of the first round and that's exactly what we got. A little bit tentative at the start of the second. I think when you've been a couple of good times, you keep out of the way a bit. <laughs> oh, good shot again, Cole yeah. Pepsi. Yeah. Oh, back comes the young lad, though. Raxa. Oh, Raxa back right comes. in the look. Oh, he's got it. Right. That's a count. That's a count. That's a count. Pepsi really starting to fizz here. Take the count. See, he, he came out like a, like a bull out of a gate. He's a wild went, man. Wow. And he picked him off. Bang. I've got a feeling this ain't going to last five rounds, by the way. Here we go. Now watch closely, ladies and gentlemen. Pepsi Denman ready to finish this fight. Wild right cross from Raxa. Gets 
caught with the right hand from Pepsi. Oh, he's, he's caught on the throat, he said. Oh, he's, he's giving him a count. It's on the throat. I wonder if he fancies it. He's been hit in the throat. He can't breathe. He's struggling, Tom. I don't know whether he fancies it. I'm not being disrespectful. I don't know whether he fancies it. Oh, yeah, he's okay. Well, he's going to oh, well respect. Respect to Raksa. But how long can he last in there with Pepsi Denman? Picking him off. Oh, good jab. Yeah. Pepsi Denman smells oh, blood in the water now. Crazy. He's like a shark. Hopefully, the Raksa, hopefully Raksa gets a bit of confidence from a jab like that. He'll get a bit of confidence. But there he throws that right it's, it's again. It's too wild, Tom. Stop trying, stop trying to knock him out. Trying to box him. Sometimes you've got to... In football, you have to... Before you, you, get, you, before you play you, your game, you have to earn the right. He's trying to win the fight without earning the right to win it by he trying to outbox him. He's got to just, he needs a bit of good coaching. Denman's got it, you can see, you're right. And he's been, I think he's been brilliant so far. He's just kept his cool. All judges went to red then, understandably as well. Well, there was a count on there, so. So it's another 10-8 round. You see him catch him with the right hand there. And that, he looked a bit nasty. He looked to be really struggling, and I was surprised to see him be able to continue there. He really looked to be struggling with that shot to the throat. With the throat shot, absolutely. But I'm not sure he got hit in the throat. I think he, I don't know. We'll see. I'd like to see the replay. But to be fair, he came back with a wonderful jab rack, sir. Here we go. And what a good feeling this must be now for Pepsi, sensing that victory is right there for the taking, the finish is there for the taking. He can taking. smell it, he can smell it. All he has to do now, he's won the fight really, all he has to do now is stay on his feet and he's won it. Quite smoother boxing style, Pepsi, look at his stance. With two 10-8s. He seems very much made for this sport, doesn't he? He looks calm and collected, he doesn't look troubled, he doesn't look rushed. I like the look of him. Pepsi. If you win the blue corner, make some noise! If you win the red corner, make some noise! Finding it very difficult to lay a knuckle on him at the moment, Raksa. Oh, he's, he's going for the he's there. He's going Pepsi for the unloading he's going now the combination. He's yeah, turned his it. back again. You cannot turn your back on Pepsi Denman. I told you before, you cannot turn your back in this sport, you'll get hurt. It's easier saying sitting here saying it. Absolutely. Isn't it? Oh, beyond doubt, he's in trouble. Rax is a warrior, but he's he's met his match in Pepsi Denman. Yeah. Well done, the young man's got up. But, oh, full credit to the warrior for wanting to carry on. Big smile on the face of his cornerman. That his fighter got back in there. Full credit to him, for to Raxa for wanting to carry on. That's cool. Wild right hand, he's nowhere near Tom. But you know, when he throws that right, look what happens to his. He's, he's actually giving a target to Denman. There's Denman again through. Pepsi Denman, too slick, too smooth. Absolutely. And too sharp. He's just waiting for his moment now. Waiting for that opening. Tommy Hadel will call for action in a moment, though. Looks knackered. Whoa. There it is from Denman. Caught him again, Dan. That's Denman okay. that's with the body shot, the left hook, and that's it. Surely now, Tom. But I thought he was down before. I thought he touched the floor before. That should have been down before. But, oh, the bell saved him. My goodness. Uh, is it? The referee. The referee says it's over. The referee says that's enough for the lad. And well done, referee. Well that's done to Tommy Hayden. That's all she wrote. Remember the name, Pepsi Denman. The crowd love him here in Phuket, Thailand. And yet the other guy, Raksa, is a local lad. <laughs> he was getting the bigger pop from the crowd though, Pepsi. Without a doubt. And to be fair, let's be honest, it was a, an absolutely overwhelming win, wasn't it? There was never a doubt about it. Convincing stuff from Pepsi Denman. Beautiful shot with the left. Then goes to the body, another left hook. And then another left, just to put the punctuation mark on it. He turns his back on him. You can never do that. 
you have the beauty of the screen. I can't see because of the sun. So. But I saw enough in the ring. Respect between the two fighters, a little fist bump there. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee stopped the fight in the third round as the blue corner wasn't able to continue. The winner in the red corner, Pepsi Denman! Pepsi Max. There he is, the star of the future for me, Pepsi. Well, we talked a lot about the opportunity that some of these fighters have. This is an opportunity in a stage for young talent in Thailand to showcase what they can do and potentially get sent over to the UK to fight for BKB, Tom. Is Pepsi Denman the most impressive of the local talent that we've seen so, we've so seen far? So we've seen so far, yeah. I think, I think he looks like he, could, he, he looked calm. He never expanded enough energy. He was in control. His footwork was great. His boxing skill was good. He's, he's definitely one I'm sure Jim will have a look at. And so often what we see, there's certain fighters that might have had a career in boxing, might have had a career in Muay Thai, but when you take the gloves off and you put them in the BKB under this rule set, they look like they're made for it. They look like they're ready to flourish. And that's the sense I get from Pepsi from Denman. Pepsi, yeah. He, for some of them, it was like, I don't know what I'm doing here because I don't know. He looked like he'd he fought BKB for a long time. He was in control from start to finish, which was, uh, which was amazing. Um, and do you know what? We've mentioned the Denman name many times. The past two fights have been Denman fighters, 2-0 and so far this yeah. evening. We haven't even seen their most talented fighter yet, TT Denman. To come. Absolutely. Undefeated. He just sparks people out, so I'm looking forward to that. OK, ladies and gentlemen, up next, allow me to introduce first of all to the blue corner, Pet Zilla. I'm looking forward to seeing this guy, Pet Zilla. 41, 5 foot 8. It's his BKB debut from Phuket. Muay Thai is, a, is 255 and 78. What a record. <laughs> He's MMA 2 and 2. He fights anywhere, anytime. And let me tell you, folks, at home, the ring you, that he's going to fight in, yesterday and today, he was putting it together. It's crazy, man. And he's, you look at him and you could be... You remember Anthony Joshua against Ruiz? Everybody went, oh, Josh. People yeah, could make the same mistake. Him, yeah. You could make the same mistake. No, you watch him when he gets in the ring. And also, it's more than 250 fights, isn't it? And never been knocked out. Will Choke was saying, I've yeah. seen him fight. He's actually fought on his opponent's show before. That's right. And Will's saying, you know, Will Choke's been here for a very long time. He's never seen Pat Zilla get knocked out. In all those fights, in all those years, he's hard as a coffin there. And next, allow me to introduce his opponent into the red corner. Will Chope. Will Chope, well known to BKB viewers. He fought and lost to Barry Jones on a TKO in 2018. He's got a great record though. Other BKB is Norton 2. He's Bluff Pro 4 and 1. And he beats Stefan Coignon in Phuket. Fought him in Phuket. Um, MMA 40 and 19. He narrowly lost to Max Holloway. So he, he's been in with some top guys. 132 pro fights in all disciplines. I mean, this guy doesn't know what fight. And I've got to say, after watching him in BKB, he's so much slimmer now and fitter. Well, it's funny when, when I saw him fight Max Holloway. Remember, Max Holloway is arguably the greatest featherweight the UFC has ever seen behind Alex Volkanovsky. Will Choke, look at him. He used to fight as a featherweight. Now he's enjoying his food a little bit more. He's feeling stronger. He said he's never felt so happy being at welterweight. A guy of his height, he looks a lot more filled out at this latter stage in his career. He's got more power, but he's not a knockout artist. He goes for volume and he goes to stay in there. Ladies and gents, BKB presents five tournament rounds of their local boxing. Introducing first in the blue corner. Representing Dragon Muay Thai Thailand, a living legend with over 400 Muay Thai fights, Pet Zilla! <laughs> Across the ring, his opponent stands in the red corner, representing Muay Fit with a BKC record of one fight, one win and one loss, an MMA record of 40 wins and 19 losses, Real Matt Semper. 
to the session or the event. Let's get down to business. Let me go, An absolute veteran, Fetzilla, at 41 years old. Uh, I think he's, for me, very similar. Chopes. Tactic has to be to keep him at range and use his then, uh, height and reach advantage. Petzilla has to get in close and make it a brawl, basically. It's, it's, it's almost uh, similar to the, the Nong Noi fight. Absolutely. Good rangy hook. The lead hook from Will Chope. But you know, when you've had as many fights as Petzilla, you know mug, are you? Great straight jab to the body. Good defense from Petzilla as well. Using that high guard to deflect the shots from Chope. Chope, such the most experienced foreign fighter around. He fights monthly in any discipline you like. Well, he's fought that, um, did he fight that wheel of whatever it was? Where you... Wheel of violence. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> you don't know what round you're going to be fighting, what Come discipline. Come on, make some noise for the fighters, please. Good body Close shot. To the body. Lovely lead hook to the body, that from Will Chope. The lanky madness, he calls himself. That's what he calls himself, lanky madness. Shot to the body from Petzilla. The USA, he used to fight out of Australia, Perth, but now he's living here. Chope spent a little bit of time in the Air Force when he was yes. younger. Using the jab well, but defended, defended stoutly from Petzilla. I've been quite impressed with Pe Pepsilla so far in terms of his defensive stance and, and the way he's making the use of it. It's just difficult to hit, isn't it? Oh, he's, so, caught, so he's been caught though by Chope there, he was caught. Oh, we heard that. Yeah. Cracked him, Will Chope. Yeah, he, oh, well, he we comes back though, Pepsilla. You might notice Pepsilla missing his front teeth, a mark of a trade. Yeah, for sure. Oh, he's in trouble in that corner. We'll throw in lefts and rights. Oh, Will Chope came to play here, ladies and gentlemen. Did he get him hurt at the end of that? Yeah, chunk, chunk. Yeah, no problem. But, but he, I mean, I was quite impressed with the, the, the defensive stance of Petzilla. But you won't win on that. You've got to have more than that. He doesn't know how to hit it because of his height. It, it, that's a problem for him. Whereas Chope can pick his shots. I was quite, yeah, good round. Good round for Chope. All three for Randy. All three went for Will Chope, the judges, which understandable. Yeah, you've been surprised to hear any different there. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it's, it's really stunning now. Now that we're not slow cooking, Tom, the setting is beautiful, this. And it's still warm. It's still warm. It's still warm. You wouldn't want to be fighting uh, respect to these absolute warriors inside the ring here. Second time. Well, we'll see how the second round pans out. See what Petzilla has got over five rounds because it's exhausting. We're surrounded by sunset bars. People have come for a drink to watch the sunset and they might look over and wonder what on earth is going on over here. From all the big restaurants and bars around us, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you walk in and see this spectacle, <laughs> it's uh, something special. Second round underway. Here we go. Will Chope would love a win here this evening against Petzilla. He knows him very well. He's fought under his promotion, I think as he we know. He fought on his own show, didn't he, on the show? Yeah, for him. They're, they're friends, these guys. Nothing friendly about being smashed with a bare knuckle, though. No. Petzilla there. Threw, threw a rare punch. Nice combinations yeah. from Chope here. That's, that be, that's, a, that's as quick as I've seen Chope's hands. Really quick hands. Really, really sharp, the American. Marching forward as well, good aggression from him. He's got to punch downwards to hit Petzilla. On the other side, Petzilla's got to punch upwards, doesn't he, to get it to, to knock him out. Nice to see the work to the body from Cho. Stalking each other now and Wild Song and a miss. Choke with the hook. Will he go back to the body? It's very close inside. The uppercut from Petzilla. Uh oh. See, I think Petzilla needs to make it a a toe to toe tear up, doesn't he? Because he's not going to have box chokes. Like rock 'em sock 'em robots in there when Petzilla starts firing on the inside. Oh, he's hurt his shoulder. Has it popped out? It might have popped out. 
Well, this is a problem for the tight. Shoulder injury. Ready? Now, if it's happened before, they could probably pop it back in. Here we go. Ready? That's painful, by the way. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Well, I think the more you do it, the less painful it is. The first time you do it, it's a bit painful. I don't want to do it any time. No, <laughs> to no. To be perfectly honest. Here we go. We're getting a close-up of this. Some people might might not fancy this. They're fine with seeing people get beaten up, but some people don't like to watch limbs going into sockets. I mean, this could really uh, put put things in jeopardy for Petzilla. I'll tell you what, if you're Will Choke, you've got to be pleased with your, your evening's but, work but, thus far, but, right? Yeah, but sometimes you have to protect a fighter from his own bravery. Yeah, of course. And particularly protect them from brave seconds. Well, here we go. I mean, when we when we say this guy's a warrior, we really mean it. 100%, absolutely. But, uh, Petzilla, 41 years of age, by the way. He did manage to uncork a couple of good shots on the inside there. The right hook from Will the Kill. Oh, good oh, body shot. Brilliant heard body that shot. Thudding Ooh. shot to the body. Oh, and up and under, great stuff from Choke. Choke looking smooth as you like. One, two with the hooks. Will Choke really letting his hands go in the Phuket sunshine. Petzilla landing on the shin with the right there at the end of the round. Didn't really affect him, I don't think, too much, but he's hanging on him, Petzilla, isn't he? It's interesting though, isn't it? For mere mortals, any one of these shots could make you go down, but these guys have incredible chins, incredible resilience. Well, that's... They say that in boxing you need the Holy Trinity. You need you need the the ability, the heart, and the chin. All three for Ed. All three for Choke. No surprise there. Turning into a, a profitable evening for Will the Kill. Now let's have another look at this. He just looks really sharp, doesn't he, Will Choke? When he gets to let his hands go. But he's, in, he's in control, isn't he? Yeah. Is in control, and when you're in control, your confidence grows, and your opponent dips. I'm wondering how that shoulder's and holding up. You know, for in any sport, the big thing is belief. Absolutely. Um, and it will now will be believing 100% he can win it. There might be doubts in Petzilla about whether he can win. We'll find out. Well, I think that shoulder injury has, has told finished here. it. They can't continue. That shoulder injury is just enough. Will, Will just won a belt in MMA at URCC in the Philippines, so he had momentum coming into this fight, and he's capitalised on that. He's as good as I've seen him. The lanky madness gets it done in Phuket, Thailand. This is a second home for Will Chope, the American. He absolutely loves Thailand. He's trained here for many years. He just might fancy England again. Well, he's a favourite here at BKB. You know, he had a tough loss to Barry Jones, who we're going to see later on in the card, but there's no shame in that. One of the best in the business. In my opinion, he is the best. He's as good as you get. Eight notes has its own story, doesn't it? It tells a story. Interesting, we just had Bob Zapp, MMA icon, pride legend, and Will Chope, UFC veteran. So many different disciplines and nationalities all coming together under the BKB banner here this evening. I'm trying desperately to talk Bob Sapp into fighting BKB in London. Who would you have him fight? Well, it, it, heavyweight, he would be Dan Podmore, who's the heavyweight champ. Dan Podmore said he'll fight anyone, right? Anyone, absolutely. Did we raise Bob Sapp to him yesterday? Did we put Bob Sapp yeah, on the Yeah, I did. I mentioned that and he said he'd fight anybody. I think if the money's right, it could be on the cards. I think uh, he's got a huge following in Japan, hasn't he? He's uh, an icon of combat sports over there. They love him because of pride, you know, K1. He's done pro wrestling as well. He's an absolute character. One of the coolest voices, I think, in combat sports. Okay. Up next, ladies and gents, allow me to introduce first of all to the blue corner, Batman. This is crazy. <laughs> this is a crazy fight. And this is not pl this is not planned. The Joker was already fighting, but his opponent pulled out, and the man they put in is known as Batman. So it's Batman against the Joker. You couldn't make it up, could you? Oh, mate, what a classic. This is very much more the Tyson Fury Batman than the Christian Bale Batman, <laughs> I think. Mean. But he's Batman nonetheless. Batman nonetheless. I love it. Has he got Alfred in his corner, though? That's the question. <laughs> yes. 
Bruce Wayne, of course, that'll be his real name. Batman against the Joker, you just couldn't make it up. But he's uh, from Bangkok, he's amateur 6-0. So Batman had to step in for his teammate. Did yes, he, not? he did. Yeah, and who, who had to pull out, and, and who missed the who missed the fight. So he's from the Mr. Fight Channel. One of those fight families, isn't it, Mr. Fight? Well, Mr. Fight, of course, got off to a good start this evening with Massing bringing oh, home yeah. the victory. Can they make it two and zero? Interesting to see. Now the temperature is, I know, I know you're still sizzling Tom, but for the fighters it's crucial it's much that better. it's much better now. When we had that first fight, it was, uh, I didn't envy them, I have to say. Batman's in the ring, his evil opponent's on his way. And next, allow me to introduce his opponent into the red corner, the Joker. <laughs> the Joker, you couldn't make it up, but it's brilliant, it's absolutely brilliant. There he comes, the Joker. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's an interesting choice of outfit. Let's put it that way. Listen, this is show business. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, absolute scenes here. It's colourful scenes and characters inside the Sea Galleria in Kata, overlooking the beautiful. Andaman ocean sea. view over there, the Andaman Sea, the pearl of the Andaman in Phuket. And next week I'm off to PP Island. Crystal James, clear waters. James Bond. You can get your Leo DiCaprio on and get yeah. to the beach. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Wasn't that the beach where Ursula Andress walked out of the sea, didn't she? In a James Bond Is that Doctor No? I don't know what film it is. I just remember her walking out the sea. Of course, <laughs> of course. I, I couldn't tell you who was, the, who was James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> right. Batman or Joker? What's oh, it going to be? We're waiting for him to come into the ring. So while we're waiting, just to remind you, we've got two world titles coming up. We've got an uh, amazing fight with Barry Jones. John, that's going to be some fight, by the way, Barry Jones. Johnny Tello, it's his first world title yeah. fight. He's been gunning for an opportunity like this. Be careful what you wish for, they yeah, say. Yeah, but sure. Ladies and gents, BKB Thailand presents Five two-minute rounds of bare knuckle boxing. Introducing first, in the blue corner, representing Mr. Fight Team with an undefeated amateur boxing record of six fights and six wins from the Kingdom of Thailand, Batman! <laughs> Across the ring, his opponent stands in the red corner, representing Street Fight Thailand. The Joker! Our referee in charge of the action is Tommy Haven. Gentlemen, <laughs> Senator Green. Everybody goes straight Sorry. There's a uh, wardrobe malfunction with the Joker. It's very important we fix that. Alrighty, guys. We went over the rules in the back. Go ahead, touch knuckles. I'm not swinging. This is me at all times. Let's get down to business. Well, I'm sure this will be a marvel to watch. You got, you... I hope you got that. <laughs> Batman and Robin, the Marvel comics. Okay, forget it. Marvel versus I'm, DC. I'm waste, isn't I'm, isn't yeah, it DC, DC, <laughs> DC, and Marvel. Marvel comics and DC. What do you make of the demeanour of these two fighters from what we've seen? Yeah, I, I love their showbiz attitude, but now it's down to business. Well, good good okay, footwork. Go. Great footwork there. Brilliant footwork from Batman. Oh, the Joker cracks him with the left hook. Joker stalking forward. Oh, a real toe-to-toe -to -toe there. Tear up. Joker stalking forward, Batman on the back foot. Good aggression from the Joker, lands to the body. Absolutely brilliant. Batman looking to work the jab, hasn't really found oh, his range shot. yet. Overhand left from the Joker. Here we go. 
<laughs> Straight there, the right hand. We've well, seen the Joker now already. He switched stance a couple of times. Joker now in orthodox, looking yep. to man and the then lead he, left. He just went to turn there and then get back, orthodox. Batman hasn't really found a home for the no. jabbers yet. The aggression's all coming from the Joker. Why so serious? He's caught, got himself in a corner here, Batman. To be fair, one of his strengths is his footwork. He's got to get out of corners because that would suit the Joker to get him pinned in a corner. Joker ready to unleash here. Yeah. Oh, the good right shot. hook from Batman. Yeah, power. Oh, a good shot. Left. Caught. Uh, the left then. Brilliant left. Solid counter from Batman at the end of the round. The Joker's the one who celebrates, though. It means nothing celebrating. That's what the judges say, but that was a, two great shots, one from each at the end. Just looking at what they... Uh, Stretching his arm there, it's interesting, stretching his arm. Good round, two draw, one red, very close round. Two draw, one red, says the judges. That's pretty much what you would expect, isn't it? Pretty much what you would expect. Yeah, both, both men had their moments. Let's have a little look at the replay. The Joker coming in aggressive, coming in strong. Is he going to go for five rounds? I don't know. There we go. It's a wild overhand right. Doesn't quite connect with that one. Right, we're ready to crack on. A really tight fight. Let's see. The Joker's just got the edge at the moment. What's Batman got to offer? We'll find out now as they touch hands. Big smile from Batman to the Joker. It's usually the Joker that's smiling. Oh, no, that's the Riddler. <laughs> yeah, he's in the back. Yeah, for sure. As um, a bit more, a bit more tentative. Again, another good close in. He's got to watch getting caught on the break. Yeah, the Joker. What he what he does when he gets in close, the Joker, he throws sh shots from close in, which is really difficult to defend against. He's he's hunting his man. Beautiful counter from Batman. He liked the aggression from Joker, but he leaves himself oh, open to this. What a shot from the Joker, he's really hurt him. Great shot, the referee have to stop them. He really hurt him then, caught him with a per peach. Oh, good stuff. Joker defending well. Batman realising though, he's got a... Unleash. And when he does unleash, he's got a good range of shots as well, Batman. Or oh, a good right there from the Joker. Batman very much on the back foot. Yeah. He looks unbalanced at times. The Joker's had around 300 Muay Thai fights. And he's a former Max Muay Thai champ. Max Muay Thai, great reputation, great promotion. They're all action up there in Bangkok. and He's a... Uh, Formidable character. It's Batman. He drops him. Great shot. The Joker's dropped him. Great shot. Great shot. Bang, 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 boom. He's getting up though. He's got to get in his corner. Neutral corner. He's unsteady on his feet, you know, Batman. Oh, the bell has saved him. He gets a minute's rest. I'm not sure, I'm not sure he's going to fancy this. Wow. What a great punch that was. Oh, the Joker. I'd love to have another look at this, Tom. That's what I'm waiting, hoping to see. Quality. Here we go. Smash with the right hand. Goes for the uppercut. It's a 10-8 round, guys. The confirmation of the 10-8. Joker putting everything behind these yeah. punches. Just looking for the definitive shot there. Yeah. 
And there's Batman on the back foot. He gets on the inside, the Joker. He misses with the right hook. Looks for his opening. It's a very clean jab that drops him. You must have paid extra for that seat right in front of the screen because I can't see it. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see with the sun. But you, you described it perfectly. And that's it, isn't it? I mean, when, you, when you've got no gloves on, it, a jab can be all she wrote. No. The jab can finish the fight. Ice on the uh, canvas. In, in, in boxing it won't, but in bare knuckle, the jab can knock you out. And that's, we've seen that a few times, but already the Joker has a 10-8 round to his credit. Big wild overhand right, the oh. uppercut from Batman, but again he's off balance. He's got to look after his footwork. Good jab from Batman that time. Batman out of range at the moment, Joker coming on the inside. Left up from that man. Another left hook, but a left hand and a big overhand right from the Joker. Another 10 8 round. He's in some trouble now. He's feeling more like Bruce Wayne at this very moment. Is he going to get back on his feet, ladies and gents? I'm Well done. He gets up. Warrior. But he's stepping right back into the fire now. Shot to the body from the Joker. Big overhand right again. He's wobbled him. You're not supposed to root for the villains, are you, Tom? <laughs> Just 30 seconds left in round three. The bell saves him. Well, all action here at BKB in Phuket. He's not far off finding the finish, Joker. He's looked very comfortable in there and aggressive as well. Let's have another look at this one then. Catches him with the left hand and comes in with a big right. Batman trying to use the jab to keep him at bay to no avail. Joker continues to stalk forward and lands the right hand on the chin. Joker gets ready to see if he can finish this. He's pretty much won the fight. I can't believe that Batman's still in there. He's taken some punishment. Surely a matter of time, Tom. Absolutely. As the Joker stalks his man. Oh, the old lovely, him again. lovely little left. he's got is that jab and he's loading Batman coming to play now coming back into this fight he's drawn blood this could be quite a comeback if Batman can pull this off Joker's been left streaming with blood Does the uppercut misses for Batman Head movement good from Joker. Cracks him with the left hand. Oh, 
Oh, the Joker in trouble. He's, he's hit him out of the ring. What a fight this has turned out to be. Cracky. Now the Joker looks in trouble. Broken nose, Tom. Confirmation from Tommy Hayden, Hayden that the Joker has in fact broken his nose. Wow. Well, this could turn the tide. I mean, Batman well, is on the cusp of defeat there, and he's he's no, he's well beaten. He's he was well beaten. We've had three ten eight rounds. So. But there you go. Now this could be something quite incredible. Oh, the fight continues. But I'll tell you what, look at Batman now. Look at the body language. He's got a whole new lease of life. And he might pull off one of the most remarkable comebacks we've seen. He just needs to touch him on the nose. Oh, wild shots, but catches him with the left. He's calling him on as well. Batman fancies it now. Crowd going wild in Phuket. Oh! He catches him. Boom, boom, boom. The Joker gets right back to his feet. Unbelievable scene. Well, what a shot that was. Well, you just couldn't believe this, the way this fight has turned around on its head. Are we looking at fight of the night here? Well, there's still four... Four to go, five to go. So, but at the moment, it's the best fight we've seen. Unbelievable! <laughs> Would you believe it, Batman? Batman's corner are going bananas. You never would have thought it. 10-8 after 10-8, and he wrestles victory from the jaws of defeat. Just look at what it means to him. Batman getting the victory. Great end to the fight. Super stuff from uh, Hwang Satan Hanyak. That's his name, Batman. Tremendous finish from him. Wow, what a comeback, uh, Andy said. From the jaws of defeat. Just clap the win. Unbelievable. I mean, broken nose. You can't mess about with it. He came back to fight. But have a look at this. He just clips him with that left hand there. Let's bring him in still. Goes for the uppercut. You see the head movement from Joker, but gets caught with the left on the jab. Then the right hook seems Brilliant. to wobble him backwards. And that could well have been the finishing shot. It was an accumulation that did the damage. And this is where the stakes are so high in bare knuckle. Ladies and gentlemen, the fight was stopped by our medics at the end of round four. And the winner in the blue corner... <laughs> Just incredible sportsmanship. You couldn't take your eyes off that fight for a second. And that was something special. Big up Bob the Beast Sap, an icon of combat sports, right here in Phuket, Thailand. Well, now, if you think you've seen some good fights, and you have, there's better to come, I'm certain. The next fight alone, T.T. Denman, he's got a knockout punch of all knockout punches. Great story as well. We've got Leo Pla, the Mexican who we saw on BYB. We've got Dan Pardmore defending his world cruiserweight title against Ahmed Bagiazayev, um, who's got a six-inch height advantage over him, by the way. Um, and then Barry Jones, the legend, the Welsh wrecking machine, takes on Johnny Tello for the world featherweight crown. Unbelievable. And uh, you've got to be at your best to beat Barry Jones, that's for certain. But um, so far, we've seen great fights. Absolutely amazing great fights. For BKB, we hope you're enjoying it at home. 
Fight.tv, of course, and Be In Sports. And I'll let you know from March, of course, you'll be able to catch us on Amazon Prime from March, which will be unbelievable as well. Big things, big things happening for BKB. This is a pioneering evening we're having here in Phuket. The first time we're seeing the BKB organization taking itself across the globe here to Thailand, to Southeast Asia. Hopefully the first of many, an opportunity for some young, talented, hungry fighters to show what they can do and maybe get an opportunity to go to London, go to the UK and show their skill on the world stage. We've talked a lot about the Denman fight team here tonight. They're 2-0 so far. TT Denman will have a chance to try and make it 3-0. He's undefeated and, as Tom says, absolute lightning in that right hand of his. He could be one to watch for this evening and for the foreseeable. Well, we'll see what he's got to offer. And, of course, another late addition, uh, Yeyin Noor from... Uh, from Myanmar. Yi Yin Nong, no stranger to bare knuckle fight sports. This will be, of course, the BKB debut for the Burmese fighter, but plenty of experience when it comes to Letway, the art of nine limbs, where, of course, you're allowed to headbutt as well. The gloves are very much off in that one. It's a beautiful but very violent sport. So he'll be no stranger to being cracked with a bare knuckle, but different ball game, as we know. He has uh, less weapons in his arsenal when it comes to BKB, but he'll be very, very tough. He, he will be tough. Well, we'll see what he's got to offer. We'll see what the fight brings. But um, at the moment, I'm sure Jim Freeman will have made one or two notes about one or two people ready to invite them back to the O2 Arena, the home of BKB, um, to take part in one of the future shows. But we will see. Who's impressed you so far, Tom? Well, obviously the last fight, because it was a comeback. Um, but I think also, I think the women's fight for our first one was excellent. In fact, there hasn't been a bad fight yet, if I'm truthful. The only one that was was when Sun stepped into the ring out of condition, well, out of ring rusty. He stepped into it and got knocked out. As I said, I, I just, I just hope that every, everyone who bumps into Sun at the bar later just buy that man a cold drink and give him a hug because to put your hand up you know, out of shape to go and fight bare knuckle. Maximum respect. Well, they're enjoying it, and as usual at all boxing events, we're all going to be singing. We have this, of course, at the O2. They've actually started using it at just about every sporting event anywhere, whether it's table tennis, snooker, football, boxing. So we've got the crowd above us at the Sea Gallery, all enjoying themselves with the sun beginning to set here in Phuket. They're overlooking the ring here and overlooking the Andaman Sea. We are overlooking your sea from your pictures, the beautiful Andaman Sea just the other side of the ring and the beaches are absolutely wonderful. The people are friendly, the food is fantastic. What is not to love about the Kingdom of Thailand? Absolutely amazing. We're just watching now as they do one or two minor adjustments to the ring apron there, just making sure that it's full tight. Important for fighters, of course, who could slip. Phuket, of course, has always been a popular tourist destination with its many beautiful beaches. And you mentioned the food and umbrellas in the cocktails, Tom, but it's actually now home to some of the best gyms on planet Earth. Yep. They're famous for their warrior type. Thai. I did two years covering Thai boxing, Muay Thai fighting with, and we had fighters come over from Thailand. I don't know whether they're from Phuket, but they came over from Bangkok, definitely and they were the most respectful people I've ever met in sport. And we've seen that again tonight, it's been truly amazing. Well, there's a lot of representatives from some very famous gyms here in Phuket, a lot of UFC fighters in the house tonight. And as we know, a lot of UFC world champions do come now to Phuket to do their fight camps. And I think it's been a huge benefit for organizations like BKB to come over because there's that culture of fighting and what you've got is the warrior mentality and that is half the battle if you're going to step into an arena like BKB you need to have warrior mentality well we've seen warriors tonight that's for sure and to be fair whether it's glove boxing or not if you get into the ring you're a warrior 
you know, too easy. And I've, I've been in the ring with a world champion, so I know exactly what it's like. Admittedly white collar, but nevertheless, I've been in there I've, in front of 500 people and got battered. So, <laughs> but I know how, no matter how hard you train, within 20 seconds, you're breathing out your backside because the nervous energy is sapped in. So I know, so anybody who steps in that ring, whether they've won one or 100 fights, they're warriors. And that's, that's something BKB respects, the warrior-like status of its fighters. And we've got some build, building as well for March, BKB 31 at the O2, and May. And it may be, I think, that we'll see the, re may just see the return of Jimmy Sweeney, the king of BKB at the O2 in May, hopefully because, uh, interesting, we've got some great fights. The next fight we've got on BKB 31, we've got um, the lightweight world title fight with Marley Churcher and James Canelli. That'll be a great fight as well. And maybe the winner might fight Jimmy Sweeney for the lightweight, who knows, but that'll be up to Jim and Joe Brown, the owners and promoters and matchmakers. But we've got some great fights happening and new talent joining us all the time. And that's the best thing about BKB. It's a roller coaster, but it's also a a, a, a line of talent, continually upgrading the talent as fighters leave us and fighters move on. So we'll see the referee there just having a little word. Don't know what he wants sorting out. But we'll see, we'll get the nod from our director, whether we cross to our referee or not. We've, we've had a bit of everything so far, haven't we? We've, uh, we've had great knockouts, we've seen flights go the distance, we've seen an incredible comeback, we've seen young talent, we've seen raw talent, and we've got world titles to look forward to. Well, this is it. Let's cross the lance for our next fight. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get straight back to business with fight number seven of the evening. Allow me to introduce, first of all, to the blue corner, Yi Ying Nong. Yi Ying Nong. 21, five foot six. It's a BKB TM debut. She's from Myanmar. The region of Karen, I'm told. Yeah, he's wearing his traditional Burmese warrior dress to represent his state. Produce many great fighters, nicknamed Brave. And uh, as you can imagine, a man who's fought more than 30 times in Letwe will have bravery in spades. He's 10 and two and three in Muay Thai. But when you fight that layway, well, that is another level. Yeah, headbutts in the I'm clinch. Not, I'm not too sure I like it. I like fair fighting. I don't like headbutting and stuff. Oh, that's why I love glove boxing and I like BKB. There's a, there's a classiness about it. I'm not too sure. There's a classiness about Muay Thai and kickboxing. But left way and streets of violence don't do it for me. Well, for me, when you see high-level Muay Thai or high-level oh, Letway, there's, the high there's a beauty. There's a beauty to it. Not for me, beauty headbutting. There's no beauty in headbutting. I said make it better now. It's in blood boxing. If there's a beauty to it. But when it's married with great striking, you know, fantastic kicks, beautiful combinations, and then the headbutt is the final strike of the combination, it can be something really impressive as a spectacle. I, I fell in love with it. Having got the opportunity to see it in me hey, listen, and Mara, nothing wrong you never with it. Know. You love it. I don't. It's it's all about opinions. It's all about opinions. But but you know, I know a lot of the BKB fighters love it. Eric Olsen, I think we had Eric Olsen face now with BYB. He loved all that. And next, allow me to introduce his opponent into the red corner, T.T. Denman. Now this is one to watch. 23 years of age from the Denman. Fighting family, five foot nine from Thailand. Bare knuckle three and zero. Oh. Pro glove sixteen and zero. Oh. The left way, as uh, Andy was saying, eleven and zero. Oh. First male to win a bare knuckle fight at the BK Kingdom show. And this is the interesting bit for him. He four to five years ago, he had an affair with a boxing sideshow. He went on, KO'd the man in bare knuckle Muay Thai. Next time the owner matched him with a four belt champion, he KO'd him as well. The promoter that upset, he had the doctor examine TT to ensure there was no metal in his knuckles. And since then, he's earned a reputation for knockouts. He's a southpaw, which I'm looking forward to seeing. Ladies and gents, BKB Thailand presents five two-minute rounds of their knuckle boxing. Introducing first, 
in the blue corner, representing tour, Chicks on Long Chats, Myanmar, with a Muay Thai record of 10 wins, 2 losses, and 3 defeats, Yi Yip Noom! Across the ring, his opponent stands in the red corner, representing Team Devon, with a bare knuckle record of 3 fights, and three wins, and a left way record of 11 fights and 11 wins, representing Thailand, T.T. Denman! Our referee in charge of the action is Matt Semper. Rules at all time, yeah? Here we go. Touch up. Let's get it on. Let's get down to business. Well, don't take your eyes off this one for a second. Two young men with a lot of talent. We've got Myanmar versus Thailand, a Southeast Asian rivalry. And when it comes to TT Denman, he's a very humble guy. But mark my words, he is a star. When he touches people, they go down. So this could end early if he's on his usual form. Well, straight away. Oh, straight away. Boom. That was hot. But that was the left, I think, did the damage, and his, his legs are gone. They're wobbling. What did I say, Tom? What did I say? He just wow. uncorks when he touches people, they go down. It's just a fact. He's all right, he says. Yi Yin says he's okay. But it was the left. It was the left. Crazy. And he's sharp as well. Look at his footwork. The footwork of TT. And again, that using that left that time you can't hit like that i think he's got to give him a warning there oh he has he's warned him no clinching and punching it might be a language barrier i think good but they were told at the oh, they were at told the clearly yep the demon fighting in that southpaw stance yeah. ready to uncork that left it's the left everybody talks about the right but it was the left He's just got power in his hands. He's got magic in his hands. Oh, and he's keeping his man at bay. And look at that left hand, ready to strike. But he never takes his eyes off his opponent. Lovely speed on the jab as well. Looks forward. What a showman. What a showman. Yeah. There he goes. And he's sharp with that. And he faints a lot as well, which throws his opponent. Just throws a little faint, then smiles at him, then throws that little left. And then the right little right hook there. It's just uh, too slick, it seems. TT just waiting for his moment. Bang! Boy. And that power. It, it rocks fighters. Closing seconds of the first round. Well, again, TT just there waiting his time. In control. The double jab. Good Walks speed. away, hands, de hands down by his side. In total control. And I think he's started to get under the skin. Well, he's got angry. Yi Yin's got angry. Well, it's obvious who the hometown favourite is here, right? And let's have another look at this, Tom. He lines up that left and then bang. I mean, it's just a great shot. He doesn't even bother trying to hide it, does it? He just lines it up. What did Jim just say, Tom? Judge is ripped. But he got a stomach cancer to 10 8 anyway. Here we go, he waits and he waits, then to the left, then the right, and then... But, but no, the key is when he gets in, gets he then again. backs away, he's in and out and in, and that's clever, because you can't be hit. You can't be hit if you... That, you ask any top fighter, get in, get out, well, that's what they do. Well, you know, watch closely, because we're looking for something here, because of all the, the young talent that we see on show here tonight, Titi's kind of been marked out as a real potential for the O2 and, yeah, and he's got to show that he's of that next level that if he does have a step up against British competition that he can not only hang with them but he can hurt them well he's got he can bang that's for sure and also if he gets that pop from the crowd that X factor that star quality that's, a, that's another thing people look at yes. there they come straight away he has that a really good look at the eyes focus he's got the eye of the tiger as he and he called oh, it, the, smile, the snapping, snapping jab! Hook to the body there from Denman. He doesn't take his eyes off him at all. So clean with his punches. And the jab again, he walks into it this time. And then gets out, then gets out of the way. I'm so impressed with this, Tom. 
gets out of the way, which I love to see. I love to see good footwork. And TG's showing us that as well. Very smooth mover. Yi Yin Nong needs to earn some respect from the tie. But to be fair, we, we, because of Titi's ability, we might not know how good Yi Yin is. Right, it's difficult to get near yeah, him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can't find it. He might be against somebody else. He might be different. But Titi already, I love that f footwork in and out. I like the swagger, I have to say. And I think the crowd are responding you to it. You only have swagger if you can do it. And he can do it. And he knows he can. Meanwhile, fighter marching forward here, but again, he can't get near him, Tom. No, he's throwing that shot. He's coming forward, though, he's... Uh, no. Two young men, by the way. Little warning from the referee. TT, some that southpaw stance, looking to uncork the left hand. Oh, he cracks him. <laughs> Just... I mean, you know it's coming, but you can't do you anything, can't about, anything it. about it. It's, it's like Arjen oh, Robin. Yeah, he always likes to come inside on the left. Absolutely. Oh, he's jumped at him. That's not allowed. I'll go to the body this time, TT Denman. Now he's changed. He just turned and then he's gone back. What's he complaining about? I'm he's not complaining, sure. look. I think because he pretended he did a little bit of swagger, he did a little bit of the, the Eubank, the little bit of that Eubank stuff. Listen, just get on with fighting, man. The, the one two combination, Boom. then he gets out of the way, shows beautiful head movement. Yep. And when he has to, he'll clinch to get the fight stopped. And the Burmese fighter, the Burmese as, as a fighting contingent, are very aggressive. One red, two draw for that round, says the judges. That might be a bit generous for Yi Yin Nong, I'm not sure. What do you think, Tom? Or well, sympathetic. Either way, Demon's in control of this fight. A total control. And the, the one thing you will say is he's trying to be aggressive. He's trying to come forward, the Burmese fighter. No, uh, without doubt. Um, Yi Yin has, has all, in fact, of all the fight, he might have come forward most. But he, he knows he's walking into trouble because his feet, his feet have got him away, but then he comes back in. I love it. I love watching him so far. We're starting to uh, accumulate a beautiful sunset here, my friend. Wonderful. And this is uh, an archetype fighting environment now. This has got to be on the bucket list for some of these fighters, especially the visiting fighters. Well, I tell you, the, the two world title fights should be happy the sun's gone down. Two right. Well, again, that, that left hand is prone, waiting. He's, Primed. And he's clever, he's intelligent, T, um, T, T. He's intelligent. He knows when he's maybe in a bit of trouble, he'll just hold and get the, the referee will break them. There is the left little hand. Little clip again, just a little clip. And these will add up. See? Then a bit holding, referee will split him. He's clever. He almost fakes as if he's going to clinch him, but then doesn't. The right hand to the body lands there for TT Denman. What's he appealing here? Not quite sure. No. Again, he's got that left hand cocked. Let's it go, gets out the way. And to be fair, Yi and Nang keeps calling him on. Like, I don't think that's... He's complaining a lot. He's getting frustrated, isn't he, at, at his opponent and how evasive he is. He can't land on him. But what what Yi Yi wants is to stand and fight, and he won't stand and fight. He's keeping him at distance. He's putting a lot behind that right hand, yeah. but it's not landed for him. Did he clip him with an elbow yeah, there? I think he did. He caught him with the elbow. That was a sharp elbow. I mean, he that's, not, him with that's the okay elbow. in that way. That, that won't no, fly here. That won't, that won't work here at all. That was clear as day. That was a sharp elbow. He's saying he didn't mean it. He's saying he didn't mean it. But those elbows can cut people up. He can have five minutes if he wants now. He's saying he threw the punch and the elbow caught him. He's just showing that again. I'll be keen to have a look at the replay yeah. for that one, Tom. Not yet. We have five minutes. It's our five minutes, yeah. 
But the elbows are notorious for, for cutting people up and they can do real damage. He's got five minutes to recover. But, you know, there are, there are sports um, in boxing where your elbows are used, you know, where you can catch with the elbow, not this. But I don't, I'm not sure he meant it. <laughs> TT just uh, gave the signal to the crowd that he wanted, he wanted a bit more noise. He's a real showman. He knows how to play up hey, to the audience. So he knows what he's doing. He also looks absolutely fine, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, he's all right. I don't think he'll take the full five here. He's milking it. He's now, milking it. Now he's going to come out fresh and he's going to come yeah. out swinging, yeah. but uh, in, a, in a measured way. The referee's having a little word. Uh, he, hasn't, he hasn't warned him or deducted because he's, he, I think he's given the benefit. Oh, here we go. There's a fresh TT Denman unleashing. One, two. But remember those two shots hit the gloves. It is hands. It, not scoring points. So if, if he's going to throw them, sort of, he's got to get through. Good just, defensive work from Yi Yin. Just giving Yi Yin something to think about. Yeah. And he has shown good range. He it, does go to the body. He doesn't, he doesn't have to stand and fight with you, my friend. You've got to go and sort him. Yi Yin's found it very difficult to find the range against Denman. Den whenever he throws, Denman's not there anymore. And a good body shot from Denman. Excellent shot. And that'll goad him into dropping his hands. It's just wild from the Burmese fighter at the end of the round. He's not even close to laying. Three people over there, Doc. <laughs> he's, he's so in control. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm at risk of sounding like I'm in the TT Denman fan club here, but... I am. I like what I see. <laughs> You've got to be. I, I like be. what I see. Listen, I've got no, I don't know Yu Yin, I don't know TT. But what I've seen, I like what I see with him. I like his footwork. And very often in BKB, footwork's the last thing they do. They're, you know, there are people who like a, a brawl and a fight. He wants to box. He, he's got great skill. He gets out of the way and he can bang. That's a lethal combination. All three judges went for red then. I mean, people often speak about different aspects of sport. Some people just want to win. I like to be entertained, Tom. And... T.T. Denman, very entertaining fighter who looks like he can do both. He can I get the win and he can entertain. I think if you're a boxer, you just want to win. All that matters is winning. But if, you want to, if you're watching it, you want to see something. And there he goes. I think if you want to be a star, you've got to learn how to do both. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. But I think he gets people on his side. Yeah, yeah, you've got to. He's just come to us and give us a little greeting, which is nice. But it will be interesting to see what he's got to offer now. He's winning the fight anyway. Interesting. I mean, when we spoke to him yesterday, very quiet guy, very humble. Yes. He's just somebody who comes to life when he steps between those ropes. This but is his stage. This is where he's happiest. This is where he expresses himself. And I tell you what, he's just made for bare knuckle. Uh, Yi Yin, oh, we've seen big comebacks it. tonight already, so let's not write off Yi Yin just yet. <laughs> Yi Yin marching forward, looking to land that right hand, no doubt. Tries to put his combinations together. <laughs> I'm getting goaded for it. Yeah, but well, we got a I don't know why we got a dose of sweat then right over us. <laughs> he, he, he's a little bit angry now, Yi Yin. TT Denman, bit of a bit of a wind-up merchant. What, but also the shots are that wild, he's missing by a distance. And no doubt tiring himself out while doing it. Oh, he switches oh, stances. He now. Oh, and then he changed back. Again, very much playing up to the crowd, showing that he's got a very deep box of tricks here, TT Denman. Oh, caught him there. Yes, more of a slap though, wasn't yeah. it? Oh, oh that's, that's wrong in the ear. That's wrong. Referee not happy. Okay, a stern warning from the referee. The last, last damn time. time. Last damn time. <laughs> Which is the same as the last time, only more important. <laughs> and again, it's wild. He's putting a lot behind these shots. Yi Yin, but not landing with them. But if he does, he's it strong could be a enough. finisher. Yi Yin's strong enough. He's got a good body, good physique. He's strong enough to to hurt you if he catches you. We've seen slightly less output from TT Denman. Perhaps he knows he's up comfortably on the judges' scorecard. 
left cycle. Great stamina from Yi Yin because yeah. he's. <laughs> goodness me! Goodness me! <laughs> he's just. He threw four punches and couldn't get him. It was like you saying Bolt ran the replay. <laughs> it was crazy. Wow. It's, uh, very flashy in the red boots. <coughs> Excuse me. But he is, absolutely. All right, let's have another look at this now. Yi Yin throwing wildly. He's nowhere near. But what I'm saying is, all that energy, see, he's taking the mix. Well, there you go. All, all three, three judges. went for Yi Yin Nang. But you have to say, Titi kind of took that round off, didn't he? But, but I've just watched it. it oh, we've just seen certainly aggression from Yi Yin, but he never struck him. It was all hit and miss. But we've not seen any real attacking output from Titi Demon for the no, first time in the fight. That's not the issue. The issue is, as the opponent hit him, he's missed him. He's been aggressive, but he's missed. And the judges can only score on points. And look, miss. Miss. You can only... It's a kind of, you can only score on the hits, not on whether you're aggressive or not. Well, anyway. But you have to say, as much as I've liked what I've seen, Titi's offensive output was yeah. next to little or none as well. Nothing there. No, compared to previous rounds, he didn't. Round so, if anything, I thought that might have been a draw. Final round. Well, here we go. Final round. Wu Yi Yin gaining confidence from that. He's defended well. The uppercut lands. Back of the head again. Foul shot. Foul shot. And what's the referee saying here? Is he going to take a point? Is he going to warn? No. The warning? No, he's not. He's just giving a warning. He's not taking a point. That's good refereeing, that. He's, he's, he's kept Yi Yin in the fight, hasn't he? Here we go. Now TT Demon will step things up again, no doubt. <laughs> Like a push to me. Caught with the shoulder there. That's a push. That's not a knockdown. That's a push. Uh, Yi Yin protesting He's his counting. innocence. He's counting. I thought that was a push to the shoulder. I'd love to see a replay of that. I have to say. Well, sometimes, you know, all it takes is an incident to turn the tide. Well, maybe you're that comfortable in a fight, you know you're that far ahead. But he's got to watch out for complacency, right? I mean, just one shot is all it takes. Less than a minute left in the final round. All TT Denman's got to do is stick about and the fight is his, right? he has got to throw it all. It lands on the top of the head with the left hand. As, as in any fight, all you have to do is knock him out and the opponent's got it in him perhaps, Yi Yin. But he's after him, he's trying to land that because he knows he's got to finish it. But, oh, good stuff from TT in close. Body work, great stuff. Referee breaks him up. Well done, TT. Yi Yin Nong very much throwing caution to the wind now. He knows he's got to get the finish. TT there obviously has thought, I'm not putting up with this anymore. As the seconds tick down. Good shot landing to the body. It's a bit, oh, the uppercut from Yi Yin Nong. Oh, good shot there from TT as well. He's made a right good go of it, Yi Yi Nang. You've got to praise the defensive work from Yi Yi Nong at the end of no, that round. He was, uh, early on, he was great defensively, but early on, he was much better, wasn't he, TT? At the end, though, he was with a lot of aggression from. Yi Yin Nong's proud of himself and I think respect he to both won. these warriors. I think he thinks he's won, but we'll see. Would you want the judges and referees that they hold up the hand? I think he just loves to fight. I just think Ooh. he, he yeah, just yeah. enjoys... Yeah, I think he just loves the action. This is where he feels alive, do you know what I mean? Both these fighters seem to enjoy every minute of that. We haven't really. had a bad fight, to be fair, apart from one where there's a, a late replacement. Here we go. So well, there's TT Demon cracking him with the left. Smash and uh, the oh, response from you. That, that looks like a really looks like a push to me. Wait, look again, look again. What do we have Ladies here? Gentlemen, have oh, we're not going to see it. Superb stuff here as the sun okay. goes down in Phuket, Thailand. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of non stop action, we consult the judges' scorecards.
I can tell you it is a unanimous decision. To the red corner, T. T. Taylor. It's hard to discuss or argue with that. He put a lot of effort in, in later on in the fight. The the, the, the guy from uh, Myanmar. And Screaming girls in the background for TT Daniel. Well, now we're coming into the, if you like, the 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 class end of the night. Although we had some great fights. Next up, next up, we've got a, a great guy. I love to watch Leo Pla. He's, he's almost at the, he's in the winter of his career. He'll tell you that himself. Um, and he wants to do some pundit work. The sunset, if you will. Yeah, the, yeah, maybe. But he's got, he's, he's a really tough guy from Mexico. Fights out of Colorado. Iron Lion. He is a tough, tough cookie. Is anybody ready for a big fight next week, AD? I, I don't know much Sandy about Mikhail Vetrila. I don't know too much about him, Street Fight Mike. But what I do like is when we talk to him, he is a tough guy as well. So this could be one hell of a fight. But we'll see as we uh, wait for... Ladies and gentlemen, up next, allow me to introduce first of all to the blue corner. Mikhail Well, the Russian is 31, he's 6 foot 1. Street Fight Mike is known as. Bare Knuckle, he's 2 and 0. Muay Thai, he's 43 and 6. MMA, 1 and 1. Pro Glove, 1 and 0. You know this man. He, is the most improved he trained as a lawyer, got a degree in the Changing Ukraine. Yeah, I think he said the lawyer, the lawyer law degree was not for him because it involves a lot of talking, and I think he likes to do the talking with his fists. Now, normally, this guy is cornered by his pit bull, Butch, but the, oh, hotel, Butch. the hotel wouldn't let him bring him in tonight. But normally, he would have his pit bull, Butch. It is, it is, they're inseparable, apparently, which is strange. Well, will that be a mental blow for him? No Butch in the corner. How big shoes to fill his Butch's. Well, he said before, he like, whenever things were, he liked to look at his dog in the corner, you know, and maybe got inspiration from him. But he's a, he looks a tough guy. Mikhail Vetrila. They breed him tougher, the Russian fighters. As he enters the ring, one years old, six foot one. But Leo Pla reckons that he's going to be the bigger and stronger fighter when they're in there. And next, allow me to introduce his opponent into the red corner, Leo Pla. Leo's 40, six foot. BYB is four, two and O. Oh, as I said before, from Mexico. Fights out of Colorado, that's where he lives. Known as Iron Lion. The Iron Lion's got the unmistakable hairstyle. He's in his 23rd year of fighting Iron now. Yep. He's an 80s kid. He, he grew up watching Jean-Claude Van Damme movies and watching Teenage Mutant what? Ninja Turtles and, and the Kumite. That's what got him into martial arts. It, his MMA is 12 and 9. Kickboxing 4 and 2. Pro Glove 5, 8 and 2. I have to say, I'm loving the vibes here in Phuket. It's a quality crowd Thank here. Thank you. Thanks for everything. I'll be here. I'll be here. That's Peter. Peter Denman thanking us. Well, what an evening he's had. Great evening. Clean sweep. It was, wasn't it? It was a clean sweep. Maximum respect to the Denman crew. They've really showcased what they're all about. I think class and uh, great training over there because all three Denman fighters have had strong reason to make a statement with Jim Freeman, I think, tonight. Absolutely. BKB Thailand presents five two-minute rounds of bare-knuckle boxing. Introducing first, 
in the blue corner, representing Russia with an undisputed bare knuckle record of two fights and two wins, Mikhail Street Fight Mike Vetrina! Across the ring, his opponent stands in the red corner, representing Mexico by way of USA, with a BKB record of four wins and two losses, Leo Iron Lion Pla! Our referee in charge of the action is Matt Semper. He'll call the fighters to the middle. Instructions all right. Over there. All right, here we go. Touch, touch hands right now. Let's go. Well, we know all about Let's Mexico get down fighters to business. Leo, Leo, well, I saw Leo. I saw him beat Bradley Johnson, uh, Brandon Johnson, and he was absolutely superb. He's also beat uh, Eric Olsen in King of the Streets, I think it was. So he's no mug. Now you get serious BKC. His Let's favorite go. shot is the left hook to the liver, so that's one to watch out for. The overhand right He's doing work. There, yeah. Danger straight away. Straight away, straight away. Straight away aggression from the Iron Lion's not making the bow. Making the bow, the Iron Lion. The iron lion. Yeah. You love to see straight it. to the body. He's worked and the body. The, left hook to the, body the body's top. put him down. The body's put him down. Called that oh no, shot. he's called it. He's, is he going to count him? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to count him. But that. You see, too often, we haven't seen much of it tonight. Work the body. It's debilitating if you get, he's knocked him off his feet, the body shot. He's almost got that Mike Tyson stocky build, hasn't he? Where yes. he uses those hooks, he gets the power, and we saw it pay dividends and if you look there. And you look at him, he doesn't come from far back. He's short, but he's still got power. Pick up the Iron Lion. He's also got the, he's got that feeling now that he's, he's on top here. Street fight Mike using the jab. Trying to use his range as an inch taller. Pla then shows that big right hand, big right hand again, and ducks out the way. Lovely head movement from the Iron Lion. Bam! Shot to the body, and another. Leo Pla fighting a good fight so far. Oh, shot from the Russian. Oh, we heard that. Yeah, and he just shakes his head, Leo Pla, gets on with it. Street fight Mike, marching forward, stalking Leo Pla. Pla though just has a little look, then throws that left, ducks into it as well, then ducks out of it. Big wide hooks coming from the Mexican. With, with, with Plar, it's like, oh, throw four shots, I might hit you with one. You know, but he never stops. But the the Russian looks to me like somebody wants to stand and fight. He do not want, want to be running around the ring, he wants to stand and fight. And we'll see, because we'll see how good the training's been. All three for red, obviously. So that's a 10-8, all three for Leo Plar, but looking there, as I, I said, I think I said to you before, the ring is a big lie detector. If you haven't done your work, this will find you out. And I just wonder how fit Iron Mike is. Look at that beautiful shot. Great body shot, and then the head. Right on the liver as well. And yeah. You feel those. Debilitating shots, the body. Excellent. And it was that shot for the body that dropped his arms and opened up the head from to hit. Okay, set his arms. Real character, Leo Clark. Great addition to this card, yeah. Uh, John Nutt just called him an animal. It's the Iron Lion. Absolute beast, this man. Uh, really impressed with that round from him. Well, we'll see what more. Sorry. The Russian, Mikhail Vetria, blesses himself. Here we go again, Judge Hands, which is. Street fight Mike in respect. the Southpaw stance now. The shot to the liver again from Leo Pla. Telling him this corner's telling him to move more. Yeah, lots of instructions coming from Street Fight Mike's team. That's what I'm saying. They were telling him to move more. He's, he reacted by moving. Leo Pla did get caught on the way in there. Shots to the body from Mikhail. Caught him on the chin there. 
Evasive with the head movement. Not as much action this time, this round, so far. Street Fight Mike doesn't want to make any big mistakes here. He knows all about the power. I think Glass got him moving around the ring a lot as well, which will test his stamina. Oh, good shot. That's where Leo Glass wants to be on the inside, landing big oh, shots. Shot. Oh, two good shots and the body. And he's holding great stuff from. Great combination there from Leo Pla. Again, those monster hooks from Upstairs. the Iron Lion. The monster hook to the, the left hook to the liver again. Upstairs and downstairs he's working, which is fantastic to see. Well, they're right in front of us now. He moves well around the ring, Leo Pla. Mikhail with the left to the body. Ten seconds left in the second round. Mikhail with the jab. Good stuff from Leo Pla. Not, not quite as much action from Pla, but it's... Uh, Enough to win the round, though, I think. Enough to win the round. It's maybe, maybe, but maybe the judges... also using his experience, knowing when to spend his power. That little combination in there has won him the round because I think he got four really good shots All three in. For blue. Well, there you go, folks. <laughs> All three judges went for the Russian Mikhail Vitria there. I'm, I'm bemused because the shots, the actual shots, look, the, where he body, then he went downstairs, then upstairs. For a big lad, Mikhail hasn't landed with much power, you no. have to say. Look, look at that, he's just caught him four times there, Pla, That's five a times. Shot. That's five times in that one, si that was the one I was talking about, a combination. That was a lovely shot though, wasn't it? That left hand, that left hand to the body. It was I'm, a shot I find that, that I find that really strange. We need to see more power from Mikhail, or more volume. Oh, I need to see him actually hitting him. You know, actually getting through. Oh, overhand right, Leo Pla, hello. He likes that one. Oh, and another one, and the body. Loves a cheeky body shot, the Iron Lion. Oh, now Mikhail with an opportunity. So they're just a bit over exuberance from Pla there, opened himself up to him. Plah, the overhand right, but Mikhail, uh -oh. I'm not seeing power behind those shots. I find that dangerous. When Pla throws that right, he doesn't just throw the right, he ducks into and opens himself up. If, if the Russian's cute, he'll spot that, and next time he ducks, he'll come with a, a hook and, and catch him. But we'll see. I think this is the only way Pla can fight, if I'm honest. All action, swinging. But he's, he's, he's hit the body some great shots, Pla, and they've been successful for him. Oh, no man left. Little jab to the body. They will accumulate for Mikhail. Yeah. Oh, oh, shot. Great shot. Staying behind his jab, the Russian. And it, he's better at the, when he's behind that jab working off it, he's better, the Russian. Which way are you with that snow? Oh, good arm. shot from the right, Plot. then the left. Good combinations to the body yeah. from Plot. The Russians holding, the referee just had a little word there about the holding. This is developing nicely, though. Parried the jab there, Plot. He sees it coming. See how he ducks and, and just hopes. Yeah, he could duck into something dangerous. Yeah, that's good. Oh. So much power, that left hook. It's a rocket of a left hook. Wow. He's definitely a, a street fighting man, is Leo Pla, that's for sure. Yeah, I would not like, like to get on the wrong side ah. of him. Well, not in a street, you wouldn't, because without a referee to stop him, he just is ferocious. 
for the Russians improving. Two red, one draw. That time two for Leo Pla. Two went for Leo Pla, one went for Blue. And yet I thought Leo had the round previous more than I think that one. It's weird this. It's all action. Ferocious when he, he has, gets on the inside. He has a windmill style, which, you know, I'm sure he just throws it, and it's a lot of averages. I'll hit you eventually. Spends an unbelievable amount of energy, though. Oh, he puts crazy. so much behind those shots. Crazy. Round four. He's got a little cut, I think, as well above the eye. Because we got we can vouch it because there's the blood on the paper. <laughs> yeah, why did I wear white? Exactly. <laughs> I've got it on me, look. Red on pink. Right, here we go. Um, Pla was saying, you know, we talked about him. This is his 23rd year fighting. He, he reckons experience could be telling, and when you get to the business rounds, it can be pivotal. Well, the older you get as well, you know, age catches up with everybody. I don't care who you are. Else Mike Tyson would still be world champion. Oh, the Whoa. Russians coming good there with some great shots. Might be struggling with his vision. He might have blood in his eye here. And can Ricard capitalise? He's putting volume together, but is he getting the power, Tom? Yeah, well... The Russians hunting him down now. Look at his face, he's a mess now, Pla. It's a mess. And I think that inspires the opponent. Well, he talked about having a lot of scar tissue, needing to have time to heal. Absolutely Left to the body. All action this, though. This is a proper BKB fight. All action. Is the doctor going to have a look at him here? Absolute warrior, the Iron Lion. But he might be in a trouble. Is that nose broken? No, I'm not sure if the nose is broken. Oh, it's hurt. It. Oh, it's over. It's calm fight on. He's not happy with the doc. He's really unhappy with that one. He wants to fight. Well, the doc's got them in BKB. The doc has the right to tell the referee it's over. And I think that's what's happened. <laughs> Unless he changes his, he won't change his mind now, will he? Can't do. You've got to protect the fighter. He's gutted, he's absolutely gutted. He's a fighter's fighter, he's a yeah. born warrior, the Iron Lion, you've got to love him. Bring it in, doc. You have to protect him, he's, 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 he's brave, he's but you've got to protect him from himself. Ladies that must be so frustrating. On the advice of our Benny team and our dogs, since the fight was stopped. And the winner in the blue corner, Nick Harris. Oh! Not having it. Leo Plas not having it. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Leo Plas. He wanted to continue. Give it up for Leo Plas, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. The Iron Lion Lion right there. I love you guys. Fair enough. Well, that guy was born to be in a ring. Without a doubt. That man was absolutely in his element and he gave us a hell of a fight and I'm gutted for him. I think he was ahead. Oh, of course oh, he was ahead. Oh. Just maybe edging it, but you know. There you go, well. We will see what happens now. We're waiting for our two title fights now, of course, up and coming. But Pla, what, Pla's talking to the TV camera there. He won't get out. Well, look, he's going to be so frustrated. He was ahead. He's done well, everything. disappointed, he's done isn't everything he? everything you'd want from a fighter. He's shown gameness. He's shown power. He's shown tenaciousness. He landed some monster shots to the body. And he kept coming forward. He's given he's given that cinematography, you know, that action movie style. We're gonna have some great photos. 
But I think every boxer will take being beat. What they won't take is having to, is having to quit, oh, be told to quit over a cut. Nobody wants to do that. And he feels it. You can feel for Leo Pla, because he might have been just ahead in the fight. But the Russian gets it. You got to look, Mikhail stayed in there and he showed his resilience, having taken some big shots. And you've got to give it to him for taking the victory. But I wanted to see a bit more from him. From? From Mikhail. Yeah, Mikhail. But for me, I think the fight didn't suit him at first until his corner made sure he started moving. At first he was standing and he was striking. Leo Pla was hitting him, body shots all over. Once the corner told him to move and he started to move, I think Leo had a few more problems to answer. But it would have been a great end to the fight, wouldn't it? If we could have carried that on, it would have been a great end. But we will see exactly when. I don't know whether we're going to carry on now with um, the next fight, which will be our world cruiserweight fight. Dan Podmore from my hometown in Birmingham defending his world cruiserweight over seven two-minute rounds against Ahmed Baguzayev. You've got, to, you've got to feel for Leo Plara. I hope we see him back in BKB because uh, he's very lovable, very entertaining. And as you say, we've got a, a banger of a co-main event. Big size difference, but when it comes to Dan Podmore, we've spoken about it with other fighters here this evening, and there are certain fighters who were just made for bare-knuckle boxing. Dan Podmore is that man. Well, he's got a great story because, to be fair, he came into the ring in his first fight, and you thought, what's he doing here? Out of shape, didn't matter, didn't care. But then all of a sudden, he's got himself sorted, and he is a force to be reckoned with now. He's five, he's won his last five on the spin, he lost the first one, won his last five on the spin, two-way world champion, and he's got something about him. This has given him, has changed his life. It's turned him around. He's now, from being a looney tune on the streets, he's now got a profile, people know who he is, and he loves it. Settled down with a family, everything's good in his life. And that's BKB has done that. You know, BKB doesn't just put on fights, it changes people's lives, gives them another path to tread when they might have been on the wrong side of the tracks, you know. So he's got a lot to be grateful for, Dan. He's going to have his hands full tonight, I think. Well, it's interesting. He's talked about how he came into bare knuckle almost by accident, you know. He was in the unlicensed boxing scene, had over 250 fights. Yeah, but describes himself as a bit of a journeyman, right? But then BKB comes along and he absolutely fell in love with it. and. If you do something that you love, it tends to show and often translates into success. And as you say, it's 1-5 on the bounce. He's facing a giant. Let's be honest, he's facing a giant. But I wouldn't be surprised if he goes out there and he puts him away, puts him away early. Well, as Confucius said, if you find a job you love, you never work a day in your life. And to be fair, he loves what he does. And I think I watched him train this week. The beach, the, the steps down to the beach, just be behind us. They are steep. He was doing 20 at a time, up and down, up and down. Man, he's, he's got himself in great shape. Let's hope, you know, it's enough for him. His wife's traveled out to watch him as well. She's here tonight to watch him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the co-main and main event of the evening. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here. I'd like to give a big round of applause for the C Gallery. Make some noise for the C Gallery crew cast. Remember the after party starts directly after. We have a buffet. Buffet for each and every one of you guys that would like to have it. It is 990 baht. It comes with Bangkok vodka. Big shout out to Gorilla Supplements. Bangkok vodka. 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 Bangkok the fighters will be getting themselves ready, as we are. So we're waiting now for our director to give us the instructions when the fighters are ready, when Dan and Ahmed are ready. But this is going to be... Dan, Dan worked hard to get this cruiserweight crown. And, I mean, to win it, he had to beat Ryan Barrett, who's an ex-Marine. Tough guy. And he had to beat him. So, we're ready to... We're ready to... So we're ready to uh, get the fighters into the ring soon, but Ryan Barrett, it was who uh, he took the cruiserweight crown away from. He's also the British world heavyweight champ, five consecutive BKB wins. This guy's a beast when it comes to fighting in the ring. He's a beast. And he's a, he's a, you know when you get a fighter that's relentless, 
you don't let up on you. He keeps coming and coming and coming and coming. They're the worst. Sometimes they back off. Right, we're going to cross to our ring announcer, Lance Murdoch. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get serious in our penultimate fight and our co-main event of the evening, the Police Gazette Diamond Belt. Allow me to introduce, first of all, to the blue corner, Ahmed Baguzayev. Ahmed Baguzayev from Russia, from Dagestan. From Dagestan. He's known as Megalodon. MMA 1 0, Muay Thai 1 0. He's 6 foot 6, so he's got a hell of a reach advantage. He's an absolute beast. He looks a tough cookie, to be honest with you. He looks a really tough guy. Yeah, I've got a good this is Dan Bob who said to us earlier, he'd fight me. Uh, Bob said, didn't he? He did. He'd so, fight anybody. He'd fight anybody. So he ain't going to be bothered about how big they are. He will not be bothered. And this guy was big, you know, he came in, he was expecting a heavyweight fight and he had to get down. And to be fair to him, he cut the weight, he made weight. But uh, there was a little bit of doubt over whether this fight well, would happen well, and he the, made it happen. The, the fight was set, the BKB Cruiserweight fight is set at 90, uh, 95 to 101. So he's coming at 101, so he's okay. And next, allow me to introduce the reigning and defending champion in the red corner, Daniel Podmore. Yeah, he, f he came in, although they'd originally said we'll go for 98 as a standard for both of them. So Dan came in at 98, he didn't, so he'd have to lose a couple of kilos. But anyway, they're both happy, they both agreed to fight. So Dan Podmore, 33, 6 foot, 5 and 1. From the UK, from Birmingham. You know a thing or two about sporting greats from Birmingham? We've had a few. We've had a few BKB fighters as well, by the way, from Birmingham. They breed them tough. They've had a, a lot of great fighters as well. Glove boxers. That have won world titles. Had great footballers. Oh, what a sight that is to see the double champ overlooking the Andaman Sea. Just brilliant. I mean, this is a, a notch on the the belt for his legacy. Unbelievably so. And, and in my career as well, by the way. You know, this is a, a milestone in my career. And hopefully, talking in the gym, I think we'll be back, which is, which is good. So I'm looking forward to that. If I can sit here for another two weeks in, in a year's time, Ladies brilliant. Ladies and gents, BKB presents seven two-minute rounds of bare-knuckle boxing in this World Championship clash. Introducing first, the challenger in the blue corner, representing Team Amiro from Mother Russia, Ahmed Megladon Maguzayev! <laughs> Across the ring, his opponent stands in the red corner, the reigning and defending champion, Representing Fitness Factory Birmingham with a BKB record of five wins and one defeat from the UK, England, and Big Pond Our referee in charge of the action is Tommy Hayden. His Hayden. trainer has come with him. Come to the center ring, please. All right, guys, we went over the rules of back. There's a, there's a touch of the Ivan Dragos yeah. about Megalodon, isn't there? Yeah. Let's get down to business. Simon Haycock's yeah, been yeah, out yeah. training with him. His trainer from Fitness Factory has been out. He trains also a lot of other BKB fighters as well. Great record. Ten years difference between the two fighters. Hard getting on the inside. Oh, the Russian really. comes straight out for it. Straight aggression. Bang. Podmore though. The worst thing you can do with Podmore is hit him because then that gets him really peed off then he's ready to come for you lovely pace to the start yeah great pace i think it's better to fight this time for podmore of the day than, than earlier Ooh, big right hand just misses from big pod the one two combination from the birmingham fighter there you go, no way! 
I like the way he's there trying to work off the jaw. Great shot. He's trying to work off the jab first and he's caught him there with a great shot. What a shot from Poddy. What a shot. Boom, 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 boom. Knocked him on his feet. Look at what it means to Daniel Podmore. We thought he might have a chance wow. of getting him out of there early. Has he produced the goods here in Phuket? Well, that was a shot. A stunning start to this fight from the champion. Is it a stunning end? Well, Dan will now smell blood. He'll smell blood. He'll want to go finish. Look, here he comes. He wants to go finish it. He wants to finish it. Megalodon fights fight this back. Is. What a fight this is, but Dan's defensive work is brilliant. Dan's defensive work was brilliant there. Ferocious pace here. Oh, these are two tough guys. Mammoth shots from both men. Blood in the eye of Podmore might be an issue. Well, if it's below, I think it's below or above. If it's above, it might be his head. Oh! Is that a slip? Or is that a count? No, it's a slip. What a oh. round, what a round. <laughs> what a great round to watch. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, these are both tough guys, man. Both tough guys. Well, you have to say that Megalodon was a little bit of an unknown quantity coming into the fight, but he's off the level, that's for sure. Absolutely. Well, he's, he's, he's obviously 10 8, 10 -8 is a 10 8, 10 8 round because he put him down, you know. But, but you know. You'd be, fin you'd be foolish to think it's over because he's a tough guy, the he Russian. He can bang. He can absolutely bang. Daniel Podmore shows exactly, though, why he's the champion. Well. I mean, he had to come in here and make a statement far from home. Yeah, for sure. And uh, that's exactly what he's done so Listen, far. Almost finished the fight early doors. He's a tough guy. You know what he's like? If you, if you came home and caught him in bed with your wife, you'd make him a cup of tea and tuck him in. You know, that's how tough he is. He is one hell of a fighter, Dan Podmore. But the way he came looking for him after the knockdown suggests that the Russian has got, has got something more to offer as well. I think we're in for a treat. Seven rounds of this. He's certainly got a bit of resilience about him. Here we go, round two. Oh. Listen, listen, to, listen to Simon Haycock. Stop swinging. His corner who trains him. Oh, oh shot! Gets caught. What Paul a gets shot! Caught. What a shot! Boom! His corner, Simon was shouting at that time, stop swinging. Simon's in his corner, man. Stop swinging. He's got a serious cut. This could be a worry. Oh, dear. There's no way to lose a fight on a cup, but it's part of the game. But his corner was shouting, Stop swinging as he got caught. It's high stakes, and uh, as, I, as I was saying, Megalodon, he's quality. He's quality. Well, that was a great punch, by the way. <laughs> that was a great punch. I mean, he, he wouldn't look out of place in a Bond film, would he, Megalodon? No. As a baddie. As a Absolutely. baddie. We just take a moment to check the safety of the fighters before we continue the World Championship clash. I mean, this would be hugely what they do, unfortunate. I think what Jim would do is bring... If, if this if it was stopped now he'd bring um, Ahmed to England to fight down in the O2 and uh, even judging what, what we've seen so far in just these two yeah, rounds, it, here we go this corner's just shouted at him again just calm here we down go. I'm expecting fireworks though now this pod trying to be a bit canny now yeah good head movement just stop swinging and fight the fight. But if either of these guys hit you, you stay hit. Megalodon going to the body. Well, he's got that height and reach. Again, good evasion from Podmore. Oh, Podmore's just thrown him off. He won't be bullied by anybody. A bit more cagey now from both fighters. They've both been put down. Well, they've both earned the respect. Yeah. Jab from Megalodon. And what he can't afford, Dan, is to get cut anymore on that. That all right, oh, good shot again. Podmore good to body. the body. Great body shot from Poddy. Oh, another better shot from him. Oh! Boom! Oh! 
blood. Blood everywhere, there's cameras everywhere. And... Wow. Okay, telling off from the referee there for Pod. I genuinely thought we were going to get covered in two heavyweights there, Tom. They were right above us and they, they almost fell on top of us. Well, that would have been mad. Well, the camera went over, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Head, head, this head, is head, a fight head, and a half, this. What a fight this is from Buddy and the a Russian. A bit of a classic. What a fight this is. Wow. Just crazy scenes here. Night has fallen in Phuket and... Just listen to the corner of Podmore. What's he saying He's there, Tom? He's telling you, keep your hands up and stop swinging. Keep your hands up. He's told him, keep your hands up. So there was the jab from Megalodon. Yep. And Podmore takes a one-two, but just keeps coming. Yeah. I think All Podmore... Three blue. All three judges went to blue then, to Ahmed Bagu Zayev. Well, you have to say, I mean, look, the, the fans back home now, they, no doubt in Britain, will be rooting for Dan Podmore and won't know anything about Mikhail Megalodon. But you have to say, he's earned some respect so far. What do you make of him? I think he's tough. But I, I think it's a, it's a bit untidy at times. It, this, is a, this is a terror, isn't it? This is a terror. This is... This is lacking a little bit of finesse, but it's got all the action the fans do. It's actually entertaining, you have to say. Buddy's in the mood. But you know when you're heavyweight or cruiserweight, if you're hit by either of these guys, you're going down. Oh, Podmore catches him there. To be fair, oh. right hand. Doesn't be, connect for Podmore. No. To be fair, if you've got, if you're the world champion and you're fighting at this level, there's no easy fights, is there? Oh, oh bang, him. bang, 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 boom, boom, boom. Down he goes. Maglodon straight back to his feet. Oh, it's not a count. Oh, oh my goodness oh, me. My word. Oh, he's trying, to, he's trying to get at the corner, man. He's hit the referee. Oh, oh my, God. he's trying to get at the ref. No, no, no. This is not the way to go fight. Now he's coming in. To, Tommy Hayden, the senior ref, coming in. The director's had to pull McCall back there. Wow. on Brandon. Wow, what is that? He tried to hit the sec. He tried to hit the trainer. He slapped. He slapped the trainer, who then spat at him. Back, you've got to go back to your corners here. The referee's going to have to deal with this. He's telling the cornerman to stop as well. Wow. Oh, he's taken a point off him for trapping and throwing as he threw him over his shoulder. As he threw him over his shoulder. He's telling, he's telling the trainer to calm down. Well, temperatures rising here in Phuket. <laughs> this is a fight. So it could be something pretty legendary here, Tom. Well, neither of them are back down, would they? Oh, he's caught him. Yep. Well, this is Dan Drown now oh, because of the saying, again, again, again. That jab, he wants him to jab him. Oh, shot! Shot! Look at Dan's face. Shot! A what statement. a shot! Boom, boom, boom! A statement from the champion. Wow! Wow! I'm loving it. Well done, Dan Podmore. What a shot. This is an incredible... Wow, well, the bell went as well. What a, to spectacle. Save him. what a spectacle, Tom. I think the trainer's in trouble. He's having a word with the trainer now. He's telling him... Simon Haycock, the trainer of... Dan Podmore is telling him, you keep out of it, it's nothing, you can't, nobody can get involved in the ring, only the fighters. And he's telling him, good referee, Tommy Hayden. Obviously, oh, it's okay. round, lots of drama, lots of conversion. <laughs> the trainer's getting in there. <laughs> what, what was the, obviously, it's a 10 a Well, it's a Superman punch to start it off, it's not allowed. That's what he got now. He threw later, him over his shoulder, he took yeah, a yeah, point off. He threw a Superman punch. So just for, Podmore didn't really do much wrong there. 
Like, it was one of them. Some fight, though. Nice drama. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, unbelievable scenes, Tom. Well, I've, I've covered world title fights everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. Just, uh, so much action. That's why we oh, know what a shot that good was. Night. What a shot. He twists, he twists really well there. <coughs> Lovely technique. Well, he took a point off him and a knockdown. So that's a 10-7 a round. 10-7. You can't take your eyes off again. Podmore fancies this one now. Big time. He's just waiting for a mistake from the Russian. He goes in, looks for the body. Oh, the left hook lands for Podmore. Beautiful. And the body shot. That's, you can see why people all over the world love heavyweights. Oh, oh, great shot from Podmore to the body. It's pure blockbuster. Dan tuck Podmore. up, you hear him? Simon Haycock shouting, tuck up, tuck up. Don't be too open. Listen to this crowd now. Overhand right from Mikel. He looks tired to me, Mikel. That's a shot, shot Dan Podmore. What a shot from Podmore. They, I said he looks tired, the Russian, but I think they both look tired. Oh, it's, oh the left hand from Megalodon. Both these fighters landing monster shots. Well, they're all booms, aren't they? There's no, there's no, there's no uh, clinical spinning each other. And these guys are trying to land the big one. The seven rounder, remember. Less than 30 seconds to go in the fourth. I'm not sure this will go the seventh, if I'm honest. Crowd going absolutely wild. Dan Podmore with the left hook. Catches him on the chin. Oof, that's a wild one. End of the round. Megalodon looking wow. tired. He is very tired. But I think Dan is as well, to be fair, because they've both put so much into this so far. What a fight. Wild scenes. Wow. This is a fight. Let's have a look now. Podmore. Just slap that rather than... Podmore faking with the left. All three for red, but Podmore looked tired at the end there. They both, I think they both look tired, to be fair. Yeah, both the Russians. Podmore looked really tired. Yeah. All three went, judges went to the red then to Dan Podmore. That was Dan a beauty, wasn't it? Yeah, Lanced super. off the chin. I'm glad we got a good ref though. <laughs> that was lovely. Shot to the, the midsection then. A jab to the chin, good evasion with the head. I think Poddy now, if he keeps calm, he, he'll win. Well, this was a lovely piece of matchmaking, actually, at the end, wasn't it? Unbelievably. And I think... Remember, I think he's a change of opponent, by the way, as well. A late change, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah very much Ivan Drago for me, playing the role perfectly. He's a giant of a man, is Mikhail Megalodon. I mean, already, I'm thinking whoever wins, there's a rematch here. Oh, I'd love to see it. Oh no, his elbow. This could be a problem. His arm's gone, his elbow. Dislocated elbow? I hope not. Need the doctor to look at it. Oh my word. He's ahead as well, Dan. Is it a dislocation we're talking about? I'm not sure, or a strain, or a sprain. He's made him squeeze his fingers. Wow, the docs are working on him. Have a look. He's tense. Oh my god. He goodness. can feel it from the crowd. He can do, can you straighten it? No. no. Major worry here for the champion now. Doctors. doctors no, it's over. It. It's over. Oh, what a blow for Dan Podmore. Would you believe it? 
What a blow for Dan Podmore. He's ahead in the fight. He's well ahead in the fight. Ahmed Baguzayev. He's the new champ. Megalodon. Wow. <laughs> Losing, anybody can lose. But when you're winning and you lose on a, something like that, it really must be heartbreaking. Well, we've seen it twice in a row now. Yeah, we've seen it. But, but already, I'm pretty certain Jim will be looking for a rematch, without a doubt. Look at him. Well, you've got to, that, it's nice to see, you know, a bit of respect shown. There you go, there you go, there you go, love that. Bring it, bring it to London, you know, bring it to London. Yeah, bring it to the O2. Just a moment again, part of the beast set, ladies and gentlemen. The beast is in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, in our penultimate contest of the evening, the BKB World Championship was stopped after round five due to a doctor's stoppage and a torn bicep. The red corner was unable to continue. The winner in the blue corner, Akmed Baguzayev! Oh, and new Akmed Baguzayev receiving the belt. Absolutely. Hey, listen, he's won the fight. He's won the fight by default. That's the, that's absolutely the way it is. But he's, the, he's walking away with the belt, so he's the winner. End of story. A very disappointing way to lose for Dan Podmore, but you have to say, if you're looking at the positives of Megalodon, he showed a lot. Great, he showed character, a lot. great character to come back and fight. But the, the facts are he was well behind in the fight. But he did show at times that he can hang. He showed that he could hurt Podmore. He showed resilience. He's got a chin. He's got stamina. There's a lot but to you, like that we saw. There's a lot to like, but already he needed a knockout to win the fight. Absolutely. But he's big enough to provide that knockout. So, but I feel for Poddy because, I mean, this was a great fight to watch, wasn't it? Just mind-blowing fight. The atmosphere was just incredible. Sign me up for the rematch. Yeah. Well, Robin Reed won't like that. <laughs> and you can fight him if you want. Wow. Just, I've got to see, see if we can get older too. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up is the main because event of the evening. Into his championship belt here in the BKB. Kind of Make sure you stick around to the after party right after this in the pool. There is a buffet for fighters and the teams. Please do not be eating the buffet unless you are a big guest. Do not go to the buffet. But stick around for the after party. Thank you very much, Kyle Beach. Well, and we still got a great fight to come. <laughs> it's just, we've had a wonderful night here in Phuket on the banks or the beach, really, of the Andaman Sea. Jim Freeman's here. Jim. I've got to ask you, yeah. that was some fight. Already, yeah. are you thinking about a rematch? Oh, you have to. Yeah. You have to. Listen. He was most, winning the fight. The most important thing here was we matched the fights well. You've seen some cracking fights. You're going to see some of these guys back in London. Um, that our roster is so strong from across the world. That's what happens in BKB. Great fights. Great matchmaking, by the way, Jim. Well done. Well done, Joe. <laughs> so, it. That's Jim Freeman, the uh, co-owner, promoter, matchmaker, along with Joe Brown, of course. Um, Joe Brown not with us tonight, sadly, because he's great fun, Joe, to be around. He's the co-owner, co-promoter, co-matchmaker with uh, Jim as well. Super stuff. So, uh, so we'll wait and see now. We're, we're heading towards our next fight. Um, just let him know if we're uh, okay to cross to our ring announcer. I'm sure we might be. Yes, it's Barry Jones against Johnny Tello. It's the world featherweight crown up for grabs. Let's cross the lands. Okay, ladies and gents, that last contest is going to be a hard act to follow. However, can somebody make some noise for the final fight of the evening? In our main event, allow me to introduce, first of all, to the blue corner, Johnny Tello. The challenger from Canada, from Ontario in Canada, Johnny Tello. He's 31, 5 foot 8. He's a switch fighter. He's known as El Toro, the bull. Bare knuckle is 1 and 1. MMA 2 and 0. Oh. Muay Thai 3 and 0. Oh. Glove Pro 3 and 0. Oh. Gloved amateur 70, 
1 and 15. Wheel of Violence, 1 and 0. Oh. That's that stupid Wheel of Violence, isn't it? Where <laughs> after one round, they spin a wheel, and whatever he says, whether it's Lethway or Muay Thai, Muay Thai, Muay Thai, you've got to do it, haven't yeah. you? Uh, Crazy. Let me tell you, Johnny Tello is bang up for a fight. Doesn't matter what discipline, whether you're wearing gloves, whether you're wearing ropes, whether you can headbutt, he'll do it. He will fight anybody, and he's been after a world title shot. He's had five fights since October. And I said it earlier to Tom, be careful what you wish for, because now he's fighting Barry Jones. It's a level up. But both these guys, we interviewed them, right? And they were both respectful, but Very totally much so. confident in their own ability. And next, allow me to introduce to the corner, the reigning and defending champion, Barry Jones. Barry Jones, the Welsh wrecking machine, 37, 5 foot 11, is 8 and 0. Oh. He's a Southpaw. He beat Louis Mello at a BYB in Miami. He took 15 seconds to flatten him. They love him in America. Glove Pro is 22 and 10. He fought Kel Brook for the British title. That's how good he is in the ring. He's the Welsh uh, Super Welterweight Champion, was BKB World Featherweight Champ, which is up for grabs tonight, and the BKB World Bantamweight champion as well this man can fight he can fight he can punch he can box but he's got great feet hands this is a guy to watch my first time seeing barry jones in the flesh and i cannot wait and i'm really enthralled as the opponent that they've given him in johnny tallow i've seen johnny tallow fight on this very stage in this very ring the sun was shining and he got a superb knockout Wow. He can perform without the gloves. He can perform at a high level. He's a fan favorite. He's the kind of fighter that fans just love to watch. So it should be a big test. He definitely respects the talent of Barry Jones, but he says he's faster and he has yeah, more angles. It's going to be interesting. And what I will say about Well, respect to Tommy Hayden. He's had a busy evening, hasn't he? He's a good referee. He's a very good referee, Tommy Hayden. And he's been in the ring himself, which is always... He's fought the UFC and he's also yeah. got a win over Will Choke. Well... Here we go. World title time. Barry Jones. Straight jab and then the left. Then Catches him in the body. Both quick Gets fighters. Back. Both of them looking very sharp. Stalks his man as usual. Jones get a good body shot. Uh, Jones knows how to invest in the body. It will pay dividends later oh, in the fight. Oh, he's a skillful boxer. Whoa. He'll work the body where he can. Tyler on the back foot. And what he doesn't do, we've seen a lot tonight, is wasted shots and wasted energy. He doesn't waste, he's economical with his shots. Just born for bare knuckle boxing. See that straight jab, he works off brilliant. Oh, he's rocked him. Wobbled. Tello's wobbled. Tello in trouble. Oh, the left hand catches him. This is a level up for Tello. He's the best we got. He's the best boxer we've got at BKB, in my opinion. Right hook from the Welsh wrecking machine. Oh, get him in. Get him in the corner. That's a bad place for Tello to be in. 
rapid right-left combination from the Welsh wrecking machine on that occasion. But Tello bites back. He doesn't throw a punch. It's always two punch. He always he'll jab and work, jab and work. He won't throw a jab and then step back. He'll do two. Lovely hands. It, it, great hands. Great hands. And watch his feet as well. There you go. There it is. Always. Exactly that. He doesn't throw a naked jab. No. Nope. He works off it, which is the, the way it should be. Have we got any Welsh in here? Make some noise! Oh, that's a push. Are we taking up no home tonight, Wales? Fascinating opening round. Great opening round, yeah. A lot of uh, skill from both. Good footwork from both. That's a great matchup. This is a tough test for Tello. The, the hand speed of uh, Barry Jones is just yeah. so impressive. He comes in, misses with the left hook. I'll tell you when he's worse, when you hit him. All three red. All three go to Jones. No great surprises Judges. there. No. That was the left hook that just wobbled him. Yeah, but when you when you tag him, he's at his worst because he can counter punch as good as anybody. There's the jab, he follows up with the, it's a right left combination. Well, we'll see what uh, Barry's got to offer now. There's not a lot of phases, Barry Jones, to be fair. But this is bare knuckle. One punch can end it from either fighter. We've seen the class of Jones so far. Oh, oh big body shot. shot from Tello. Super shot from Tello. It's impressive. Oh, what a shot that is. Not a knockdown. Oh, he's oh, it's, it's, it's slip. Fair enough, the referee on the spot. Naked jab on that occasion from Jones. Barry Jones stalking forward. I was going to say, Tello's on the back foot, his knees, backing away. Thudding shot, I think that came off the shoulder. Jones there trying to tee up that shot. And he's better close in than he is distance, but he can do both. But in close in, he can range a shot. See, body, upper, respect, head. Respect the defense of Tello, though. He's good. Some of the best head movement we've seen today. Yeah. Well, you need it at this level. It's the art of not getting hit. Let's go! Jones goes looking. He's such a nice guy as well, Barry Jones. And I found Toro, El Toro the same. Yeah, both of them clearly respect the yeah. other but don't fear the other. No, exactly. The jab doing work for Tello there. Well, this corner shouting to Jones, get the jab going. Wild left hook. Doesn't land for Tello. You can hear it, get the jab going. Jones controlling the ring at the moment. Yeah. Oh, great job. And there it is. Again, he is starting to utilise the jab a lot more yeah. now, Jones. Gets caught there, though. Yep. Tello's, oh, Tello's going to be dangerous. Tello growing into the fight. Much, much more of a technical fight, this. The last one was a fight. This is more of a technical fight. Great footwork from both, great defence from both. The right hand from Tello. There's the left from Barry Jones and he follows up with a right and another left. Well, the judges have gone two for Barry and one for Tello. So, Barry Jones already two rounds ahead. But I think you, you might be right. I think Teller looks like he's growing into the fight. Because you come up against the guy who's 8-0, no, you're going to be thinking, aren't you? So he's come up against the guy who's 8-0, no, he's felt him out, and he's thinking, hang on here, maybe I can do something. The belief will be there. And Barry Jones is supremely confident, belief in his ability. 
Barry Jones, 37 years old, just looks at the peak of his powers still. He's unbelievably fit. He's such a disciplined fighter. Johnny Tello, six years younger, hoping to come into his prime. Shot to the body from El Toro. Good shot. And another. Jones with a good high guard. Good feint as well from Johnny Tello there, just trying to tease Barry Jones into a move. Oh, good oh, shot. Oh, he gets clipped proper. That was a naughty shot from Barry Jones right on the chin. Short as well, just a short clip, but a good one. He is difficult to hit, Tello. Yes, he is. It's good movement. Got caught with a short uppercut, though, on the inside. Can't take both. your eyes off this. No, both fighters desperately trying to make that breakthrough. Darn it, darn it. They're both quality fighters. Johnny's become very popular here in Thailand, despite being from Toronto. He's made a career here. He does change his stance quite often, though. Tello. Go, go, quiet, Let me hear you. And sometimes he's a bit face on his knee. It's, it's interesting, square. interesting the way he is. But it's whatever suits you. Jones working the jab. Oh. Heard that one. Bang, bang. Tello. Oh, good feint again from Jones. Really good right hook to the body from Johnny Tello. Oh, that's good fight, continuing good continuing fight. Continuing to grow, Johnny Tello. He's yeah. continuing to grow in confidence and in output. He's, I think it's his belief. He's, be, he's beginning to believe. Excellent stuff. Belief, faith, desire. All of those things are important. All three to Barry Jones. <laughs> I thought Tello did had a little bit more than that, though. I'm, I'm not enough, obviously, not enough, for the judges. Not enough for the judges. But if you... Was it Henry Ford who said, if you think you can't, or you think you can, you're right. This is, isn't it? And that's what I mean about Tello. All of a sudden, he's beginning to think, I can. And he's right. But Barry Jones controlling the fight. Such an accomplished boxer. Be yeah, the Jimmy Sweeney, the king of BKB. Stick to your boxing. Stick to the boxing. I would have thought that Tello would have earned the respect at this stage. He's certainly gone on a lot longer than Barry Jones's last fight. Yep. Jones looks awfully calm in there, but Tello, those body shots will accumulate for him. Yeah, but jo Jones, I mean, for me, watching, He's in control. He's dominating the ring. Tello's, Tello's doing his bit. See, Tello's showing a bit more aggression now. Why not? But if he does, see, I was going to say, if he does, he'll open up. And that's what's happened. He's gone aggressive, he's opened up, boom. And that's the class of boom, Barry boom, Jones. Boom. That's, that's the class. See, you so, what I was trying to say, when he was away from him, it was okay. But the minute he opened up and come looking, he'll pick him off. He's such an accomplished fighter, Barry Jones. He's up. Great shot from Barry Jones. Controlling the fight, dominating the fight. El Toro looking to get that movement going, but Barry Jones, the aggressor, in control of the fight as ever. He's tried to switch now. Double jab. He's tried to switch um, Johnny Tello two or three times, and neither's working for him. He needs to, he needs to stick to one. Because he he's not phasing Barry Jones, whatever he does. Ever since Barry Jones' corner told him to invest in the jab, it seems to be working wonderfully yes. well. Yes, indeed. Good That's shot. One, two. Good shot. Oh, oh, left hook. He's in trouble. Oh, oh at the ring. Oh. And you just wonder because Johnny Teller looks a little bit like he's flagging. Yeah. But he keeps coming. 
Barry Jones since the finish here. Barry Jones knows. Stay on my feet. I've won the fight. He knows. What he knows, he, what he knows now about it, he can't take risks because he's won the fight on points already. Interesting. Look at him, his eyes are never off Tello. Good shot from Tello though there. His demeanour is just incredible. Incredibly cool. Incredible, isn't it? Unbelievable. What a card. Very, very high level. What a card. Yeah. Very high level. 10 7 round, that by the way. Just shows his quality time and again. Well, I, th I think I said to you yesterday and I said today, he's the best BKB I've got by country distance. He's just got everything. Some have got aggression, some have got skill, some have got. He's got it all. Seconds out, seconds out the ring, please. Seconds out. Here we go again. Toro versus Welsh Machine. Here we go, fifth round. Well, Barry Jones. Has Johnny Tello got anything to offer now? Because he's got to, he's got to take a few risks now. And let me tell you, for nothing, Barry Jones is not the fighter to take risks against because he'll pick you off. Beautiful use of the double jab from the Welshman. He's always, he's always his stance, he never takes his eyes off you. Now we've seen fighters who throw shots and duck out of it. He doesn't duck out of it. He keeps his... Tello's having a go though now. This is fascinating, he is having a proper go. The man from Canada and Barry Jones clips him with the jab for the umpteenth time in this fight. Openings will occur. Jones just... Knows he just waste. He doesn't have to rush anything. He doesn't have to take risks. Whereas Tello has to take a few risks. Jab to the body from Jones. Is anybody here for Johnny Tello? Is anybody here for Barry Jones? One, two, three combination to the body from Tello. This is the main event, ladies and gents. Jones starts stalking his man. Johnny. Tello's giving his, his all now, isn't he? He's just giving his all. Well, he's got to. He's got to leave it all out there. And yes. oh, shot. oh, walks right into the left. He's done. G gum shield out. That always gets you a second or two. There's enough blood in this ring. You want to give it a little rinse first. Wales versus Canada. Just 20 seconds left in the fifth round. And it's going to be another Barry Jones round, you would have thought. Oh, what a shot from Barry. But he stayed on his fi feet, Tello. He stayed on his feet. He's tough. This, this guy from Canada's tough. Oh, hello. Johnny Tello. Wow. Scenes at the end of round five, Johnny Tello getting absolutely cracked with the left hand, but then coming back with a barrage of punches at the end of the round. Well, we've got two rounds to go, and I think that'll be Jones round again, if I'm honest. Two red, one blue, the judges say. So another round to Barry Jones. Now, if, if his corner's honest with him, Tello, they'll say, look, you've got to do something now. T you've got to take a few risks. You might get knocked out, but you've got to take the risk. In fairness to him, it looks like he already is. It looks like he might have been told, yes, maybe. You cannot accuse of uh, Johnny Tello of not leaving everything out in the ring here. No, he's, he's given the lot. He's gone balls to the wall, and uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't rule it out. Oh, what are they saying to each other? Out. There's a bit of back and forth between the two. I don't know what was going on there. Here we go. Round six, here we go. And you just wonder if something like that could Tello get under the skin. Could he make him make a mistake? No, you don't, you, don't, you don't rattle him. He don't get rattled easy. He's been in with the best. Not here, but in gloved as well. 
Patello a little on the back foot. G. Jones just doesn't waste. He's economical when he shots him. He always waits. But Tello's having a bit of a, a go here. He's caught him. The right hook, Tello. It's a nice shot. He's got to take one to give one. Oh, what a swing that was. But after, in this heat, fight, they're going to be tired, both of them. Ooh. It's got a hell of a chin, Tello. Yes. Both guys are, are fit, aren't they? They're coming to the ring in good shape. Well, one, two to the body. El Turo is getting on the inside, looking to cause some damage. Oh, that one's the back of the neck. Bit of a slap on the, the neck side there, but his body shot was good then from Tello. Both men landing shots here. Both. Barry Jones doesn't have to take risks. Again, going back to that jab, the old reliable for Barry Jones. Yeah. Stick to your boxing. Don't get, what Barry can't afford to do is get involved in a scrap. Because if he gets involved in a toe-to-toe -to -toe with him... Oh, anything can happen. Anything. So, you're winning the fight, just see the fight out. Dropping Win his the head, fight. he's walked into the hook. Tello starting to flag at the end of the round. 15 seconds left in round six. Oh. Tello's having a right, both of them having a go. Beautiful work, Tello. Well, wow. interesting to see what the judges say then. Bit of a closer round, no? Yeah, I think so. Well, they hear Barry Jones had him in the corner and gets clipped on the chin, which seems to have a bit of respect. Same again. Two red, one blue. So, if he stays on his feet, he's won it. But they'll be telling Tello's corner, because Jim tells the corner in the last round what the situation is. So Tello now will know he's got to do, so he could be explosive this round. Final round of the evening. And what an evening it's been. What a night it's been for BKB out in Thailand, in the Kingdom of Thailand, where people have been wonderful to us. On the banks of the Andaman Sea, on the hotel roof of uh, Sea Gallery. Here we go indeed. Barry Jones, Johnny Tello have given us a show. Tello needs to dig deep and pull out something special to wrestle the title away from the Welshman. Needs something of a Hail Mary. A bit more than that, I think. Just sensible boxing it now from Barry Jones. Absolutely, keep him a distance, work off the jab, see the fight out, win the fight, go home, keep the belt. And make it 9-0. Oh. This is what champions do, right? Yeah, for sure. It's all about winning the fight. It's not about entertaining, it's nothing. The fans want it, but for him, all that he focuses on is winning the fight. Crucially, Johnny Tello is a man with a dream and he's still here. He's still here in round seven. All it takes is one shot. For sure. And uh, we could be in for a shot here. Would you put your money on it, your house? <laughs> it's, uh, we've seen stranger things happen in this sport. I don't think we're going to see it in this one, if I'm honest. No, 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 no. The odds are definitely against him here, but... but there's always a puncher's chance. Let's go, Johnny! Let's go, Johnny! He hasn't got enough left. He's got enough power to worry Barry Jones. Lock him out! Jones continues to look classy here. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's what he's used, hasn't he? Class from start to finish. Yeah, he's looked like a champion. His footwork, oh, little clip there, beautiful. Jones. His footwork, his, look at his body, look at his head movement. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's been consistent. Here we go, 10 seconds of glory. Barry Jones with the hook. We're getting covered in sweat here. And just
Jones again, the man oozes class. And there that, ladies and gentlemen, is why he's the champion. Barry Jones, the Welsh wrecking machine. Absolutely st great stuff from Barry Jones. We know in England what he's capable of. We see him all the time. But now the people of Thailand and around the world have seen exactly what he's got to offer. But Johnny Tello didn't disgrace himself, that's for sure. He was a, a worthy opponent. But I think it's, it's a, a, just a simple thing now to hold his hand up. Jones, because there's no danger. It's, he's the winner, Barry Jones. And that diamond belt look. What about? Yeah, fantastic. The Police Gazette belt. Wow, ladies and gentlemen. First things first, huge round of applause. Yeah, good fight. Excellent fight. With our main event of the evening, and the BKB World Championship Clash, we consult the judges' scorecards. It is a unanimous decision. And still, in the red corner, the champion! Gentlemen. Also, make some noise for El Toro! Well, there you go. What a night it's been. Barry Jones retains his world featherweight crown at uh, BKB. Dan Bodmore sadly Good lost his. With the uh, the doc stepping in, rightly so, I think. To be fair, the doc called it right. But you've already heard from Jim Freeman. A rematch will be on the cards, that's for sure. And what a rematch that will be. I would love to watch that again because that was just epic bare knuckle boxing at its finest. We had drama, we had spectacle, we had blood, we had power, we had it all. Well, we've had, we've seen tonight, we've seen skill, we've seen courage, we've seen desire, we've seen bravery, we've seen warrior like, we've seen defying the odds, we've seen it all at BKB 30 here in Thailand. It's been absolutely amazing. And you know, you don't, you don't lose in boxing. You win or you learn. There's fighters tonight that have not won, but they'll go away better because they'll have learned from it. And that's what we hope. And I'm sure we'll be seeing some of these guys in England that we've seen tonight. We'll, we'll see them at the O2 Arena. Certainly, and I think there's even boxers on the card who may not have gotten a result, but their stock has risen. Yeah, for sure. By what they've shown here. For sure. Well, the Denman camp, the family, they're one to look at because they are really sharp. It's been a wonderful night. We're back, by the way. BKB 31 in March at the O2 Arena. Get your tickets because there are some great fights there ready for us. It's been a wonderful night. As I said before, thanks to the Kingdom of Thailand for making us so welcome here at BKB. On behalf of the owners, promoters and matchmakers, Joe Brown and Jim Freeman, thank you so much. We've enjoyed ourselves. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you very much indeed. Everybody, have a great night. We're going to. Thanks very much indeed. Take care.